great intro and yes i will call you wood daddy if you pay me enough so you mind if you show me yours i'm like whoa this is not that type of stream hey and welcome to lego law life in libation number 13 i can't believe we're at 13 already that is a little crazy doesn't yeah, seem like we've done that many i love the intro i mean the yeah. beginning intro was a little bit odd but sure <laughs> <laughs> we tend to we tend to throw a little a little zipper out there in the beginning yeah. which is sad it, it never ends up on my live stream time. i, I know like, yeah. if you're watching live you gotta like watch it's for the people that are watching on replay that's really what yes. it's for yes they'll, they'll catch it and i don't even they don't get it on mine they don't get it what because oh, i gotta clip out the intro because of the copyright stuff so why guess, don't you why don't you get the the software or the 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 account that I have and then you can get it all? I should. Anyways, welcome Rob. How are you? Doing well. I'm, I'm if my camera shuts off, it's because I'm wrangling a puppy that is not really cooperating right now. He's a little oh, rambunctious. He's, he's, he's oh, so yep. handsome though. He's finding yeah. cords and it's you know what having having a puppy when you have a studio set up where there's any form of lights, cords, USB extensions. It's a little bit stressful. It looks like he's I, I can imagine. <laughs> Are you drinking, he's, Rob? That's his third already now. He was just prepper, preparing <laughs> for this. <laughs> yep. Yep. Uh, Guinness for right now. Guinness for right now. Guinness for right now. Outstanding. Uh, all right. Well, what What's are you up, building, Dan? Rob? Sorry. I, I didn't mean to cut you Fired. This Lego set from the movie Up. Outstanding. Nice. I like that. So yeah. excited. Can we can we take a moment to recognize how good of a movie that actually is? It is a really good movie. Please let's. It's it's really good. So let's Would you say right? to it's celebrate one all of the best Disney stories right? that they've actually made? Like it's one of the last times I can remember an animated picture having a really damn good story to it. And it was an original story. It wasn't a remake or some sort of butchered fairy tale or anything like that. It was a really good story. We went through like 10, 10 15 years where they were doing that, right? The Toy Story was a phenomenal story. Toy story. It came out. Oh. They had oh, Cars. Monsters, Inc. Up. was phenomenal. Cars, Monsters, Inc. was really good. But that's Shrek. before, I think, all guys, isn't, yes. isn't all of this before Disney officially acquired Pixar? Yes. Probably, yeah. I think so. Yeah, yeah. when they that were doing they good were stuff. Yeah. yeah, when they were still on the come up. <laughs> well, I have from the 1990s an original Wild West set. I've uh, saved the book in most of the parts. I had to order a couple of parts, that's but so I finally awesome. found all of them. And so that's what I'm building. Excellent. So what you cool. got, Val? We're doing Darth Vader. Yes. This is the final in the uh, in the collection of of head statue things, boss. Oh, not exactly. Yours looks a lot more no like more a lot heads? more parts than everyone else's. Mine? Yeah, it might be. I don't know. See the thing. So so mine though is old school parts. They don't tell you like what it is and how many you need. They're just like, yeah, look at that and recreate it. Yeah. So so this is going to be a little bit more challenging. It's a Lego direction, Dave. It's not that complicated. I promise. <laughs> I mean, it's not IKEA instructions. Exactly. True. It didn't, it true. didn't come with an Allen wrench. You'll be all right. Dude, <laughs> I have not. And that was before Lego. it came with the actual Lego wrench thing, too, right? Right. Didn't before, have that back then. These deals. Yeah. I haven't Ooh, done I Legos know. in a, in the time since they gave you these. This is a book. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's yeah. intense now. Yeah. And the guests, the, the, the chat will want to see update. Like they're going to want to know what page are you on? How many this pieces? You know. Yeah, I'm not saying it's a race. There are 130 pages in this thing. <laughs> Rob yeah. just realized what he signed up for tonight. Just yes, now. He did. <laughs> <laughs> so, son of a bitch. I'm going to be hanging Rob, out with these guys for Rob hours. Says, Rob says, <laughs> I don't feel very well. Oh, I'm Leo, just, Leo just hit a, hit a button. Stop hitting buttons. Leo, Colleen. I like what M. Young says, my two... YouTube worlds colliding. Oh and wait, I gotta really cancel cool. the poll. Let's see. So, so we had a poll up on um, what color uh, Wendy's lips were going to be today, uh, and red. Forty-eight percent red was the was the pick. But I feel like they're more pink. 
They are a little more pink. I, I lined yeah. it with a hot pink. It looks like pink from, from yeah. yeah. I lined it with a hot pink, but then I have this like really dark, darkish color that didn't turn out so dark. Look at that. So yeah. I will I will let you guys know too. It was fun. I don't know if it's your kids or your grandkids, but they came in before we were in the back making fun of her for wearing oh look, she's wearing makeup. She doesn't she wear makeup. Totally making fun of me. <laughs> I'm like, don't embarrass me like that. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Well, David and Valhalla know I only wear makeup for the streams. She loves it's us. for us. I, I love wear it around the so house much. on occasion. It's such a pleasure to be here. And <laughs> yeah. for, those, for those of you who are, who are new, people always ask, and I appreciate it. It's very kind and sweet. People always want to know what my channel is. They want to know how to support. And I love you for asking. It's very kind. The way you can support me is by supporting our wonderful guest star and our two amazing hosts because I'm just a super fan who gets to hang out every few weeks with these guys. Oh, you're way more than that, Wendy. Well, thank you. But we call her just, a little stalkerish, but just a little. The good kind. Yeah, just because I just because I just because I have all the rights to your your stream. Oh yeah. Rob and go. Yeah, there's so, not exactly um, an official I, story. I have a question. What is this orange thing? That's a That's tool, tool for removing pieces if um if they if you got to take them off and and like reposition them. It's really handy. It's it looks stupid handy. and you're like, "Really?" It's the most handiest thing ever and I have a 100 of them and they're all inside the house and I'm in the shop. So I'm going to go without it today. Um Oh, you messed up. I did. I did. So, so Rob, why um how did you get into streaming on YouTube? That's the first question I ask most people. But you got I'm kind serious? of a weird interesting start. He's got an yeah, awesome I had a very start. weird, interesting start. So, um, back, I started kind of watching lawyers. Let's see, after COVID, my law practice, I owned a law firm. We had some struggles getting kind of restarted. And I had a, a practice. It was good enough to kind of sustain myself. It was great. I loved it. And, but it was, it was quiet. It was just me and one other partner. So, I found uh, it was originally Ricada's streaming when he was streaming the Rittenhouse trial. And I felt like having that on the background, it was like having a, having like an office room full of people talking about a case. I enjoyed just having that presence. Then that case is done. I watched, I think, what was the next one? That, uh, uh, it was, uh, one of the still self-defense one. Oh. And then there was the popcorn dude in Florida. I remember the I just started watching these trials. It was a good way of, of keeping company in the in the office when I was practicing. Anyway, the Johnny Depp trial starts coming up, and, and I had been kind of not following it, but I saw the news pop up because it's in Fairfax. It's where I practice primarily. It's my jurisdiction. So first day of trial rolls around, and I'm watching commentary, and Everyone is getting the comments wrong. Like all the people on the panel are they're they're blaming Judge Ascarati, they're flipping out, they're she doesn't know what hearsay is. And I'm like, are you kidding me? The objections are crappy. Like you you have to know the judge, like you have to push the objections. She she was overruling objections. She would say overruled on that ground, which is like you have more. Try again. We cannot, okay. yeah. So it was kind of frustrating. So I finally DM'd uh, I think uh, Alita and Nick. And they said, we'd love to have you on. It was before those channels really did blow up. Um, and before that trial really, really became massive. So they said, would you, would you be on? And I didn't want to be on. I never wanted to be on camera at all. Oh, my God. Dog, stop pulling stuff. <laughs> it's not the Legos that are going to distract him from, from answering no, questions. No, it's not. Uh, I didn't want to be on screen at all. So finally, I agreed to come on, gave commentary, knew the case, knew the judge, knew the courtroom, knew the procedure. And halfway through the testimony of Amber Heard, she testifies to one of these incidents. For those of you guys who don't know, I am a woodworker. That's the law lumber. That's kind of a part-time passion that I have. So... Halfway through Amber Heard's testimony, she's testifying about an event or an incident where uh, Johnny Depp has her on the on the bed, is pushing her head down into the bed, and she feels the bed break. And then they throw a picture up of what the bed looked like. She says, that's what the bed looked like after it broke. And I was like, mm, nope, it wouldn't break that way. 
here's why. Here's why. So I went back and I pulled the testimony from the UK case and found some interesting, I mean, she used interesting words when she was testifying to this stuff. Like I could feel his feet gaining purchase. One, what normal, what normal human talks like that? Gaining purchase. She's I, I talk like that all the time. I don't, I don't understand your issue, but okay. He is, he is normal. <laughs> like she's Sweet reading out of a Gaining purchase straight. on the bed. Okay. That's odd. Uh, and anyways, I, I compared all the testimony, pulled it up and I filmed a video at like two o'clock in the morning. Um, put it out at like 3 a.m. or something like that. Alita saw it, reposted it, and all of a sudden the damn video went viral. <laughs> nice. One point something million views. Goodness. Goodness. I remember you got like 40,000 views, something like that, or uh, uh, subs like overnight. It was amazing. It, it was, and what was weird about it, it was, it was before the subs came before i even had a channel making content <laughs> and you're like oh now i gotta put out content no i'm stuck yeah, in like, this now YouTube I gotta put out hell content. and everyone it was it was weird because everyone was like oh and people don't the virality thing is it, it happens i don't know how it happens i'll never be able to figure out how it happened it just kind of did but i started really just enjoying continuing giving commentary on these cases you find that people find interest in law and what I really liked doing was making the law more approachable, less scary for people to see. You know, people get intimidated by courtrooms and court process and they shouldn't be. So I try to, I think that was the goal. So that's how I got started. You know, average normal story of how people start. Yeah, YouTube. just how we all started on YouTube with 40,000 subs before we ever posted anything. <laughs> It was cool to see. It was cool to watch happen. I remember when the uh, the the video came out, and um, you very eloquently explained how wood wouldn't break in such a matter. And, well, and one fascinating thing about well, not fascinating, but the number of people who were very I couldn't control the fact that I had that many subscribers. I couldn't control the fact that these things occurred. I couldn't control any of those things. I just kind of walked into it and. People were like pissed. They were people had opinion. Like, oh, you've only done it for so long. Yeah, I know that. Long way to learn. Well, I was one of those. I was so pissed at you. Were you? I I also see in the time silly. since then. Yeah. It's the time not since easy. Then. In, well, in the time since then, being able to continue it. That's pretty that's impressive. A lot. It's a lot of freaking work. People don't appreciate how much work it is, especially because I still practice full time. And that little practice that I had, well, I ended up joining a larger firm as a partner. And that, like the time thing, is just even less and less and less and less. So, um, so how often do you stream? Because I, I mean, I'm subscribed to your channel, but I think I see you mainly streaming on Fridays. Do you only stream on Fridays? Friday is the regular stuff. Um, okay. I have been told by a uh, mischief manager who is the fiance that I am allowed to cover one trial per year. Oh, that's disappointing. No, well, no, that's good. The, you got somebody in your corner. Well, because I was doing the take care of Maya trial and I was doing recaps. So here I was watching the full day of testimony, practicing law, doing depositions, hearings, etc. in my own trials trying to recap that going live at 8 p.m. every night to try and recap what took place that day for an entire duration of a trial it's not it's it's not easy right it's it's uh you know it when away. it looks easy on the screen that means that you put a lot of work into the background uh you put a lot of effort into it ahead of time the uh and it is time consuming that's why i sort of like after the crumbly trial which was a local trial for me uh, I was like, yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm retiring from YouTube. Although I seem to be streaming a lot more than I ever have been now. Uh, yeah, but it's more control. It's more like I can still go to work every day, do my job, and then stream something. Uh, but that's it's good. It's fun. It is fun. I mean, so, it can uh, very much get get overpowering, right? Like it's it's easy to fall into this 
this thing and just go all out and lose track of of some of your other priorities it's really easy to do y'all very easy lose track of time lose track yeah. of right like you it is you have to maintain balance because it'll it'll kill you absolutely it's it's a weird thing not like it's you know harder than a regular job or whatever that thing is that's going around right now but it's it, it can get a little <laughs> bit much <laughs> <laughs> but Holland is all about having a regular job. Go ahead. Uh, I used Thank to have regular kids. jobs. I was muted. <clears throat> you were oh, muted the whole time. Wendy's I'm, been talking. I just I'm like, hey, the time. Dude, well, I just so... wanted to um, acknowledge some super chats. That's we have. Thank you, DSN, for the four ninety nine super sticker. We really appreciate you watching, and I love your avatar. It's really cool. And we also have some gifted memberships. Sandy gifted 10 memberships for MLS tonight. Thank you, Sandy, oh, so much. Thank you very much, Sandy. Normally yeah. I read those out, but I'm missing everything during the Lego stream and yeah. everything and, else. And at the end, if if David finishes way before everyone else, he'll usually read those out. And Lady Draconis gifted 10 more memberships to MLS, and we really appreciate that. Thank you so very much. And by the way, I was at Disneyland for the last few days, so screaming on rides, so my voice is a little crazy. Um, it was the ride yeah. you were screaming on, huh? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I was riding. Mary Coppola with the $1.99 Super Chat. This is great. Love watching you all. We love you to be here. Thank you, everybody who's joining us. We're having a great time. Absolutely. And Lady Lostander with a super sticker for $5. Thank you, girl. We appreciate you. And also Legally Live gifted 20 memberships to Valhalla Awaits Group. Thank you so much, Legally Live. Thank McKinley. you, McKinley. We appreciate that. And Junk has a question. And by the way, Chad, if you have a question and you want me to ask the guys, if you could please put the red question mark like how Jung did in hers. Um, it helps stand out, especially when the chat is, is going as hot as it is tonight. She wants to know, when are we getting a wood off? You know, like a woodworking challenge. Sure, that's what she meant. Oh. <laughs> that would be cool. That would be cool, actually. Okay, so Not here's the good. thing about woodworking. Um, I've done it for many years as a job. I have, um, I've, I was a carpenter in a former life before I became an attorney. And then in between that, I had a furniture company. And it was always stressful to have like a deadline or to build something. It's so nice to build something leisurely. And then if you end up selling it later on, so be it. Uh, yep. And just recently, I got a couple of orders for some baby changing stations that they wanted to match the cabinetry and stuff like that. I was like, OK, I'll do it. You know, that'll be fun. And um, it's stressful, like performing uh, woodworking on command. I don't like it. <laughs> It doesn't make it fun to do woodworking because I want to sit here and play with my table leg in a sander for like an hour, right? And just relax. Um, but we can maybe do something. I see you do a lot of lathe work, right? With pens. That became kind of a relatively recent thing. Uh, the advice I always got was don't buy a lathe. And <laughs> I now know why people give that advice. Yeah. It is insanely addictive. It, it is so addictive. I started playing around on my um, my grandfather's old lathe. And that's the only one I have. The thing is probably 70 oh. years old. But um, it's so addictive. He used to take goids, um, which is in like an infected part of a tree, and then make bowls out of them. Yep. And uh, so I started making just whatever random stuff I could do. I would do like an epoxy pour, make something out of it. And I've made some rings, wooden rings out of it. Those aren't very fragile, though. Uh, but you can't stop. Once you start turning on the lathe, you can't stop. It's a lot it's of too, a it, lathe. It's, a lathe is a machine that locks in a piece of wood, and it spins really fast. So you can just kind of scratch it and carve it into whatever shape you want very efficiently. Yeah. You, it, basically, like, where, where a standard... Where a standard project, like if I was making a cutting board or something, right, that would take multiple days. You have glue ups and all this other stuff you got to do. Yeah. The part about the lathe that's so addicting is you can churn out a pen or a bowl in an hour. Yeah. Instead of hours and hours of, of physical manual labor. How much of so Leo's what, chaos are you guys hearing in the background right now? None. None. I don't, I don't hear any. So 
We have some other amazing speakers tonight. We have the expert in the White Rabbit. Thank you for joining. We love you all. Hey, so guys. Much. And we have, um, I have a story who is uh, otherwise known as Yamaha Biker. And for those of you who have never um, heard his he heard his channel because he does audio. He 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 tells really cool like grim stories and stuff like that. Like really cool stories. Yamaha's story. awesome. We but his him. voice, dude, check it out. I have a story. Someone will link it for you guys. And don't forget to check out the White Rabbit and the Expert. And also we have um, another. Uh, we have um, McKinley in here uh, legally live. Check out everyone's channels. Please support our community. We appreciate it. We support everybody here. We love everybody here, especially Rob. And we've been posting his link as well. Very cool. So, Very love cool. so Rob, what, meet so many cool people. Yeah, that's the thing. I was going to ask you is like, what's your, is that one of like your, the cool things that you've experienced or yeah, what are some of your highlights doing this? Geez. Are we talking about woodworking or YouTube? YouTube. Okay. Yeah, we've moved on from woodworking. So okay. I, I missed that part. Like YouTube part. highlights have really been uh, honestly the Ian Runkle bromance thing is one of the coolest things. It's like oh. a brother from another mother. It really is. Um getting a chance to hang out with him outside of that. Like going to the Gundy's two years in a row when he was up for those awards. Um that's been a lot of fun. The, the Take Care of Maya coverage was awesome and getting to meet the attorneys. So Greg Anderson, Nick Whitney, meeting them. That was the weekend I actually proposed to Mischief. It was that weekend when I Aww. met them down in Florida. So, you know, I will say that that weekend I heard a collective cry from all the women in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> you heard a bunch of women just giving up on life at that point, right? <laughs> Plotting uh, the demise. <laughs> so, so have you done? You you said you did taking care of Maya. That was was that this calendar year? Are you permitted one more uh, trial stream this uh, for twenty twenty four? I get, I was. get, I get a trial stream for twenty twenty four. Outstanding. Okay. Any idea so what I you're looking for? No clue right now. Really? Um, there's, I mean, a lot of them sound promising. It's just a question of which ones are going to go, which ones are going to get to that trial. And there's no controlling that. That's going to no. happen no. organically I mean, this, in the moment. The, the Sarah Boone trial is, is it's almost like a guarantee to be nuts. Ridiculous. Yeah. See, I feel like that trial is going to be boring unless she's in pro per. Yeah. If no. she... <laughs> She's going to be the best TV ever. She's going to wig out. I hope so. I she's going to freak out at some point. Boring. We need someone wigging out. We need you. Exactly. We need we somebody need crazy Leticia again. Stock or someone, you know, like <laughs> Looney Tune City. We like that. So what's your take on Sarah Boone, Rob? She wants a defense that she's not entitled to. More than anything That's in the world, she... She wants that's a defense that she's... doesn't have a foundation. Go ahead. No, that's what I was going to say. That's why I feel like she's going to end up in pro per. Because she's going to keep pushing back on every single attorney that she ever gets. And the judge is going to say, fine, we have a date. You're going at it. You're representing yourself. And we're going to get her letters only in trial form. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> Let's hope so. <laughs> Mary Coppola, number 13, with a 499 super chat, says, sorry about Rob's woke F pack. It was a good run. Oh, yeah. The Wolfpack lost tonight. Um, so the idea that I'm putting this back in that box for the Legos is not happening. Is he chewing the box to shit? Oh, is that yeah. what's happening? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's got him, but you know what? It's got him distracted. So I'm just going to. Yeah, let him have it. I'm going to take, gonna take my win. Terrible it's thing. Cyber risk. He'll have right. a nice. BM and it'll all be nice. Mm -hmm. The glue might not do him any like favors long term, but you know, he's, he's a young dog, he'll be all right. <sighs> my dog, so well, one of my dogs has a thing for um, water bottles, plastic water bottles. She'll take them and she'll chew the lids off of them and then she's done. She just wants the lid off and then that's it. So it's well, amazingly annoying. Your members are being very kind to us. Thank you, Rob. 
They're all seventy two. Oh, they, I, I, my chat. That's another thing that's been amazing. Is they seem really sweet. The chat that somehow decided they wanted to stick around and follow have been some of the coolest people ever. I, it's just amazing how generous, kind they are. I mean, when I was, I was nervous when I announced that I was engaged. And yeah, you're right. Like the it, it, people make jokes all the damn time. And I don't mind them. They never bothered me. But they've been remarkably kind. That's sweet. Of course they will. You're one of the you're one of the guys that uh, you know, you 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 can tell that you're genuine. You can tell that people actually matter to you, right? Your responses are, are real and genuine. And it's it's one of those things that uh, you're just easy to support. You're easy to to be there for or whatever. You know what I mean? You're you're an easy guy to like root for. Yeah, like Tia Nena says, we are also happy for Rob. That's that's See? Awesome. It's incredibly nice of all of you. That's sweet. So we do have a couple of questions. Um and chat, I am what I'm doing, just so you know, you can't see like what's going on in the background, but sometimes I'll star the question. That way when people, I don't want to interrupt somebody to ask a question. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. So, but I but I am paying attention. So don't think you're being forgotten. And if and by the way, if you don't get your question answered quick enough, go ahead and ask again. Sometimes I just miss it. And that's okay too. I get if I get fired, I get fired. What are you gonna do? You're not um, getting fired. Stop. Yeah, you're not getting fired because I don't want to do this job. I don't exactly. Right. Um, I don't want to train your replacement, Wendy. I don't want to. I know, right? Fire. I mean, I would be sad. I'll, I would miss you guys. Fiery Red Podcast for two dollars says hello, Valhalla, Dave, Rob, and Wendy, and mods. What's going on, Fiery Red? How you doing, bud? Hello, hello. So cool. Okay, so Irish La Tejana says, Rob, when are we having another TOC? Trials of the century. Oh, that is yeah. the timing, the timing part. Um, I loved doing that series. I still love doing that series. Getting Ian and I down to, and the next one that we're doing, we've already announced it's the Nuremberg trials. Nice. One. That is not a trial you go into half-assed. No, that one you got to be serious about. You have to be very serious and very careful with your research. And so it takes <laughs> Don't make time. fun of the mustaches. Don't do it. It, it's, it's it not takes worth it. time to do it. And two, it's, it's putting that time together and then finding a time that works for both of our schedules. Now, luckily, the summer should have some openings. It's just timing hasn't worked. I love it, but... And unfortunately, had to redo a lot of them. I have to redo all of them, basically. We Why'd had, you have to redo them? It's a long story. There was a, a creator that was working with us for a period of time on them, and we discovered uh, that some of the material was not original. Uh, being used. Uh, so rather than risk. I was concerned with doing something jointly with Valhalla for the same reason. But... <laughs> <laughs> and Junk says, Junk Forever says, doesn't Rob do woodworking on his YouTube channel? I remember the lesson for Joe. That seemed fun. I like doing that stuff. Uh, I will try to do members only streams from the shop. One of the challenge in filming any, any, any woodworking stuff in the, in the shop is one, remembering to get the camera rolling. Two, a lot of the equipment that we have causes a ton of vibration. So filming anything around a table saw, band saw, like filming it, very difficult. Um, I've gotten the camera set up on the lathe working pretty well. So I'm able to film that. Uh, but I usually do that kind of stuff. That's, that's like a me space. So I bring members down in there and I kind of just keep it to that. That's important too, though. Right. And um, half Irish uh, mentioned a few times that your outro is a good example of the lathe. So maybe at some point we could post that if you if you'll let us. If it's not gonna, yeah, let me see if I can't find bother it. you too much. We would love to see that. You have uh, you have a lathe in your exit. You stream so late too. Where are you located, actually? East Coast. Oh. You're on the East Coast. Also, it's just me that's late. So you're just like, up late. in bed by the time you end your stream. 
I'm just up late. Like I start my stream at 8 p.m. and it's the I always pick too many topics to cover, and Ian's ADHD never allows me to get through all of it. <laughs> you can relate to that, yeah. right, Dave? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Rain Good Man, my thank you for the five dollar super chat. Says Rob got exactly the community he deserves and has naturally attracted. I Hell find yeah. that to be true with most. Remarkable. That's great. Yeah. You know, we've been uh, with Solomon Anderson, uh, the brother of Zachariah Anderson. We've been doing some streams every evening, uh, recapping. We're replaying the Zachariah Anderson trial, Wisconsin v. Zachariah mm -hmm. Anderson. Zachary and we've Anderson. Doing, there you go. Oh, yeah. We've Get been doing 45-minute uh, streams, recapping the day of trial. We limit ourselves to like three topics, general topics, 15 minutes each. But we hold ourselves to it. And even wow. if it seems short. I, we just have like this, like we, we catch each other when we're, when we're rambling and we recorrect each other. So if I'm rambling down a topic, he'll say, all right, next topic, we're going to talk about this or vice versa. And so far it's been a week. We've done it five of them. I was wondering why you haven't really sent well. me an invite yet. Now it makes perfect sense. You're, you're yeah. Really we only stick to the 45 minute thing. I get it now. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so like we have, so there's a, the wrongful podcast, by the way, everyone needs to check out wrongful podcast. So oh, yeah. those three ladies are coming on and joining us, I think Thursday. So there's going to be six of us and I said, good. We're limited to seven and a half minutes each. Cause that's all you get to talk. Seven and uh, no way, seven and a half minutes for each person. Well, we I actually I have a couple of timers going, and we've been watching it because we want to make sure that they're short, they're 45 minutes, and it forces us to hit the points we want to hit and ignore sort of the um the, the you know the the yeah the the tangibles the, the the nuances that don't necessarily matter so much that you get trapped in with that case. Yes. Exactly. And it's been a lot of fun. Maybe you uh, don't want to do 45 minutes, something a little longer, but it's been a lot of fun. And it's been it's been a fun challenge to try to do it, too, is we will meet like 15 minutes ahead of time or and we're like, all right, we're going to talk about this, this, this and this. And That's exciting. good. It's really hard to do that. It's hard to condense yourself. It is. It's especially like an exercise in self-control, really you know, like especially if you're paying attention to chat because, you know, they ha that has a whole life of its own. Oftentimes. That's the downside is that we have to ignore chat a lot. Um, I did notice the, that in the Solomon streams. We do get no ignored a little bit. That, yeah. was, that ends up being the case when you get to, even if you end up getting like, the, when you, if you hit a topic that's yeah really, people are really interested in, yeah. chat starts flying and you try to keep your eyes on it. It's impossible. Yeah. It is. It's really hard. And and I appreciate everybody being so patient when um, we have a special guest that's as famous as Rob. We get a lot. The chat gets, you know, fast and furious and it's hard to keep up. But we appreciate your patience because I know you're excited to see him and we're excited to have him as our guest. That's um, famous as Rob. You know what? I'm realizing I Actually, don't have the pieces as organized as I thought I did for this freaking build. Good. And I'm missing so many pieces. I might yeah. not actually finish a build. That's not um, how this works. Uh -uh, that's not. Uh -uh. No, no, no. Because that's Megan not how Fox, this works. Megan Fox was not allowed to quit. You're not allowed to quit. That's rude. <laughs> that's a rude host. Um. So we have. Um, whoops! I just missed it. Sorry. Where did it? Oh, some several people have asked, but especially Elise Charlene Fine Art because she was so kind enough to send a dollar ninety nine super chat. Can we see what you are all building? Absolutely, oh, absolutely. Thank you for the super chat, Elise. We appreciate you. All right, Rob, we're gonna go to you. All right, Rob hang on. Goes. So are you gonna take over my job now since you don't have any Lego? No, I'm. Well, all right, whoops, so wrong guy. No, that was right. I decided a lot of small pieces apparently. So this is the inside of the house. That's outstanding. Really I love that. And then here's Russell. Russell with his he has his let me see if I can't get that closer. The little backpack. Awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, for those That's of so you who cool. got here late, he's doing the up build. The up the movie, movie up. the Disney movie. And yeah, like can we see the, the front of your instruction manual, Russell? Yeah, since the box is now being eaten. Right. <laughs> So cute. There it is. I want that one. 
It's pretty cool. Stop. I saw it the other day at the store. I thought it, it was a, a cool build. Well, Holly, what do you got going on, buddy? I am building the Darth Vader yes. helmet. Love it. We got the stand done, mostly. Stand. Uh, oh, wow. You're far along yeah. already. And then... Big but Hollow's excited. Bottom. He might actually beat me for once. <laughs> for once. Get out of here. <laughs> How about you, David? I have a Wild West build from 1996, I want to say. And I thought I had all the pieces. I printed out the book with like a list of all the pieces so I could get it all organized. And I yeah. thought I had them all, but now I'm missing a ton. So a ton? this is fun. Really? No, a ton. Of, like, That's not like you at all. That's really weird. Well, He's just I think excuses. no. See, I thought. All right, look at this. See this piece right here? It's just like one giant block. Yeah. Okay. I thought I had it, but I don't. I have this piece, which is not the same one. Oh. And so now I'm trying to reconstruct this from I just would, bricks. You you yeah. make things difficult sometimes. You know it. What's that? You make things difficult sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> That's so awesome. now, so now I'm just recreating it all from gray bricks. That's what I'm doing. I need, I need a, a about a five minute break because I've got a dog that just peed. Go in for it. Nest. Yeah. Go for it. Worry. So no let worries. me clean that up. Um, you can put we'll me talk down about you while you're gone. That's fair. We will so talk about you. <laughs> oh, I, do, so what do we really think of Rob? I don't know, man. I, I think he's got I, that I weird can. dog and. Uh, Oh, I'm the worst. I'm the worst. I'm the worst. I mean, he's awful. It's so bad. It's so bad. <laughs> Rude. And you know what? We cannot have unattractive men on here anymore. It's not fun for me. Unattractive men. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you should fun, see. There was some Always of the ladies fun. in chat that were like, what? He's engaged? No way. They're pissed. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure they were losing their minds. <laughs> I was. I remember that stream. When he announced it, was it a members That's only? Cute. I don't know if it was a members only, but I saw it, and uh, yeah, that was highly entertaining. Lady Los Andres. Rob's awesome. The first time I ever met Rob, I don't remember whose stream it was, but me, him, and Runkle ended up hanging out in the green room for like hours after the stream. Aww. It was the first time I ever met him. I was like, oh, these guys are pretty cool. I like them. So, chat. I don't know if you all know this. So. I didn't know this until I streamed with, with until I've been on streams, obviously. But so there's like a green, called the green room. Like when you're an actor, you have a green room where you get ready, you do your makeup and you do your costumes and stuff. Anyway, so StreamYard, which is the the, the platform most streamers use to stream. Um, there's like- where I put my costume on. Yeah. And so we all look the same as you're seeing us now. We look like that to each other in the green room, right? We're just don't, not live. So nobody can hear or see us. But I didn't know about the green room before the first time I streamed. And so the first time we streamed, I was exhausted because I'd never done anything for like five hours at a time before. And so afterwards, Valhalla goes, you know, we got to hang out afterwards, right? And I was like, yeah, sure. Yeah, you, can, yeah. you can come back. You can come back, Wendy. Oh, yeah. She left. She just yeah. disappeared. And we messaged her like, you know, you can come back. We hang know. out a little bit and talk. We talk about the chat and everything. Yeah. yeah. Talk about all of you. We do. Giggity. I couldn't even sit, finish the sentence with a straight face. <laughs> oh no! Whoops! Somebody had something for Valhalla. What, I forgot how delicate the stupid. I bet it was with Rakeda. Valhalla awaits. I remember seeing you there way back when. Am I? It might have been. It might have been Rakeda. I red pen. Probably. That makes Valhalla, Valhalla makes the rounds though, so who knows? That's true. Homer Simpson calls like us like a more. Vegas hooker. <laughs> Except he gets paid a lot better than they do. Yeah, right. Them girls make bank. I know. I was joking. You know, I know. Actually, I don't. Oh, hey, Solomon Anderson. What's he up, Sol? Hey, Sol? He does get around. We were just talking about you, buddy. We were just talking about We were. You. Everyone oh, needs to check God. out Solomon Says on uh, on weekdays. Me too. Um, Weekdays at 6 p.m. Eastern, 9 p.m. Central. Sorry. I was, I like stopped halfway through my sentence. The mods will post that, please. Rob's engagement and Sean's engagement are so different. Rob doesn't stream as much and Sean is on every day. Yeah. Right. 
All right, so Valhalla, I'm going to ask you some questions since we're waiting for Rob. What, a good what idea. um, how much? Or like, well, first of all, how did you get into actually streaming rather than just popping in on people's channels randomly? Mm. Well, I think that that was actually the the original plan, right? I think streaming was always kind of the goal, but I uh, I wasn't in a big rush. I wasn't ever in a hurry to get there, so I just kind of. I was in chat for a long time for, I don't know, a year, two years, and then started modding for people and, and kind of making a, a name for myself in chat, if you will. And then uh, now we're here, I guess. Kind of a lame we're so story. glad you're here. It is kind of a lame story. Do it's better next time. Story. My bad. My bad. Do better, Bob. <laughs> uh, oh, Jesus. This what do you hope to achieve now. with your channel there, Valhalla? Me? Nothing. Yeah. Absolutely nothing. Okay. I hope that um, I can post occasional goat videos and people enjoy that. And I hope that I can create laughs in the world. That's what I hope. Tell you what, I'm going to build okay. this entire thing, this this block yeah. out of bricks, and then I'm going to find the piece. That's there what's going to happen here. Whatever you said, sure. That sounds it Makes sense to me. Makes perfect sense to me. You always make no sense to me, and I don't care because I love you. I think you're amazing. <laughs> Even if you're an idiot. This is the love I wouldn't I know. Get from my own I channel. wouldn't know. That's the great that's the great part. Oh my god. The dog all squared away there, Rob. Yeah. He's in he's in his crate for bed, so hopefully he doesn't Aww. start barking too much. He was quite rambunctious. He's still a baby. Salvador Dali uh, talks is Rob, what is a woman? That's his question. Damn it. Uh, that's a good a woman. Question. What is a woman? What is happening? He also asks, is it true you accidentally end your stream? Okay. One question at a time, Salvador. <laughs> what? Is it true that yeah, Ian accidentally? No, no. Ian doesn't, Ian doesn't accidentally end my streams. What is a woman? What is a woman? I think a woman is honestly. I think a woman's someone who could have a baby, not just is capable. Is born with the equipment to have a child. How ridiculous is it that that may be a controversial statement, sir? I, so someone's going to get mad about it. Oh, he said no. Ask him about Ian accidentally ending a stream. Oh, he answered the question it? already. I don't know that. Yeah, he asked it. I don't know. Hi, so Brandon. Salvador has a Sal Salvador, the one who asked the question, Usually has a tendency to end people's streams randomly, including mine during a fundraiser. He sure now did. he has said, I don't oh. feel as bad because Ian accidentally shut down one of Rob's streams. And we said, Hmm, I don't know that that happened. I don't know that I've ever had Ian shut down one of my streams. Well, Ian has you saved one of my streams. Stream too? <laughs> Brandon, right here, thank you. For the dollar ninety nine super chat. I'm excited to see Val. Where's the beer? Where's Ow. the beer, bud? We got it. We got it. Got and the old drinking horn out. That mug. Salvador Dali talk. Thank you for the two dollar sixty nine cent super chat. Salvador, can I discuss Schroeder's frustration with Jensen? Judge Salvador, Schroeder, you can discuss whatever you want. You want Rob to discuss it? Is that your question? I think he's talking about on the Solomon Anderson stream. I'm guessing. Oh, I would be way off. Okay, so what? yeah, he I th he's just talking. He's just being uh, silly, I think. Yeah. Pop Princess asks Rob, "What do you think of the Karen Reed case?" I have not been following that almost at all. Like, really? so I I am almost completely in the dark on that. I, I will see little snippets from here and there, and the more that I see like little snippets, I feel so lost because I haven't seen anything about the case. Yeah. Oh my god. The. Uh, the end of 12 hours i'll bring you up to speed right. that i have i between that and then what's the um the richard allen case delphi that's the other one oh that's delphi yeah delphi that's the other one that's that's it's like factually there's so many facts that aren't lining up i well i just i don't know enough of them oh just in general the, the sheer yeah. number of facts i got it at least Charlene Fine Art for the four ninety nine super chat. Thank you very much. I love the Law Tube community because you all support each other. I have wood puzzles. I am building. Well, welcome and thank you for building along with us. Absolutely. Here, we hope you're having fun. 
and Irish has been a member for eight months. Rob, thoughts on Zach? Research himself for custody? I don't understand your question, my babe. Research himself for custody. Oh, okay. So what she's getting at, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the Zachary Anderson case. I followed a bit of it. He, I know he, enough um, that I'm dangerous. Yeah. Um, that you're dangerous? <laughs> well, my commentary on it, was, I, I, I know enough. I can talk about it. Okay. All right. Very good. So what she's asking is uh, he had a file on his computer entitled Rosalio Gutierrez. And the idea was, well, at least when I was watching it live, I do a lot of family law as well. I said, well, he's doing research uh, for a family law case. I guarantee it. He's filing for custody. Mm -hmm. He doesn't know who this guy is. And he's gathering information about this guy who's around, going to be around or has been around his kids. And that's what I saw. But they used it against him in saying that he was stalking them. And I think that's her question is, what are your thoughts on that? I think it's it's kind of standard practice that you would. I mean, I see that all the time. Yeah, the right. People that do the research, it, it's and you you don't even call it opposition research. It's one of those things where you want to know who who's around your kids. It doesn't yeah. mean that you hate the guy. It doesn't mean anything. It's just you have questions. You have heard this name tossed around by your children, so you're curious. I think that's a uh, a responsibility as a father more than a than than anything. I think you're absolutely owe it to your children to make sure that the people that are around them are safe people. Oh, I love that. Crazy old fart. I'm new to law too. How long have each of you been doing law too? You guys want to answer that? Actually, Rob's the old veteran out of the group. <laughs> yeah, he is. He is. He is. I've been. Well, okay. So technically, my channel has been around for about six years. It didn't and I count. Did you weren't doing anything on it. I was. I had tons of videos up. Uh, not tons. I had se actually quite a few. Uh, and then I stopped doing it. <laughs> and then I started live streaming trials. And that's when everyone said, hey, who's this awesome guy over here at uh, Making Law Simple? We can't get enough of him. Was that the word they uh, used? But, awesome. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was that's, that's, that's that was for the exact words that I heard. <laughs> yeah, um, that, was that was just about a year ago that I started streaming trials. Rob started like we just discussed at the Depp. the JD J Johnny yeah. Depp trial. So, I think creation of my channel was April. I want to say ninth. I might have posted a couple goat videos before that, but I think. I was, I think I was like Rob, where that was one of those trials that, that had an impact and, you know, watching Rakeda, I learned that I could, people on the internet can be a little bit spicy and it's okay. Yeah. So I figured why not. Bree H, I drink iced tea during the streams. I, um, I don't drink normally. And I did drink alcohol during a fundraising stream that we did for Zachary Anderson, of course. Yes, you um, did. For the free Zachary Anderson fund. Not Got wild. Me. She got, got out of control. Her top came off and everything. Yeah, you guys missed it. You missed it. I had a cute bra on, though, so it was all good. It worked. Oh, my God. Yeah. Are you being serious and right now? No, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> but I usually drink I usually drink um, iced tea. For Rob's drink. like, I need to get invites more often over here. I know, right? Rob's like, I'm not going to be engaged much. I'm just kidding. Hang on. I'll be um, right back. All right. You're going to oh, go try to find out. Yeah, make sure your gifted membership option is turned on. Um, if you would like to know how to do it, sometimes it's not as easy as you think on the phone. When was the last gifted? Is there is when is the last gifted? Minutes ago. At the top of the chat, you guys should see a little green box. You see a little green box at the top of the chat. Wrong one. If you click on the little green box, the little pop-up screen will show up and it'll say enable gifted memberships. That is the fastest way for you to enable gifted memberships. It is. There you go. Thanks, Rob. Right, Rob coming in with the with the save. That's because he's OG. He knows how to do the thing. Well, like I, I just said, he's the old you guys grizzled yeah. veteran. Yeah. Do this. I I had to learn all this stuff really quickly on the fly. Like, oh yeah, I bet. But that's what's cool about having an organic beginning. Like that's that's really cool. I like that. Well, that's kind of the point, though, is his beginning is, wasn't organic, right? It was wasn't just organic. All that, that was that was all of a sudden. It was, it was the channel was this size, and there's an expectation like the, the the webcam was gone. I because I, the webcam Thank it you, works, sir. but it's really crappy quality, and then the mic becomes an issue. So the yeah. mic gets upgraded. Then it's well, it's all the other stuff. There's little 
the number of inside jokes that I guess have now been going on for two years are just pretty amazing. Like the whole, the bots in the background and the robot jury, the, the, the unicorn Ziggy sawdust, like Ziggy sawdust. That was, I was going to ask about the unicorn because I don't know that I'm from super familiar with the story or its origin. Yeah. But I know it's your thing, right? It's your, your sparkle farts and unicorns and whatnot. It was actually, oh, he's right here. Um, this guy. Oh, hi. So this was, I was watching a, a video and Elaine Bredehoff was giving some commentary about how everyone needs to learn something from this debt case and it's no one's going to believe you unless you bring receipts, right? That was the takeaway. I was getting really fucking pissed watching that. Sorry for the profanity. You're good. That's good. Really, uh, I just did. I, I try to respect people's people. We are, we are, we swear a lot over here. Okay. That's fair. I just try to respect people's spaces before I know what the boundaries are. So okay. this Good was brother. sitting on a shelf right over there. Cause it was intended as a gift for my niece and someone, I guess I grabbed it because it's stress ball. So it's squishy. So I started squeezing this thing <laughs> and out of stress and then someone in the chat goes is that a unicorn and i said <laughs> yeah it's, it's, it is it is it is yeah it's it was a gift for my niece so i go and i set it down but i didn't realize that i had set it down it was in view of the camera and so every time i was on the live stream people saw the unicorn in the background and um it didn't end up going to my niece i ended up getting a replacement but uh one you of stole, the amazing you well, stole one, your one, niece's one, toy. I no, still it gets people's better. gifts all it the gets, time. It gets better. One of the one of the people that's one of the amazing chat uh participants, uh Buru Berries. Um I know Buru Berries. She DM'd me. Yeah, she DM'd me and she says, Can I replace the gift for your niece? You know, I do crochet. And I'd like to, you know, give how many nieces and nephews do you have? So within several months, all of a sudden. A box shows up and it's little unicorns for each one of my nieces and Aww. little triceratops or little dinos for each one of my nephews. And that's awesome. Uh, another one up there. So we started sending unicorns and unicorns kind of became the mascot of the channel. And you know what? It, it's it's funny because people like to people like to tease or make they make remarks about oh my gosh, it's a unicorn. Yada yada. I don't care. That's one of the fun things about it. Like my favorite colors, unapologetically, my favorite color is purple. Hell yeah. I, I wear pink shirts. I wear pink ties. My like, dad's favorite color is pink and he loves saying it. Yeah. So it, he's also unicorns. a badass. So say it to his face that you don't like it and watch what happens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's it's funny. And then there was one time where, what is, what is Ozzy Overlord? He, I wore, I have a unicorn hoodie around here somewhere. Someone sent me. And I wore it, and his kids saw me, and I think he started referring to me as the king of the unicorns, Aww. and was asking Ozzy once, like, "Daddy, are you streaming with the unicorn king again?" We were backstage I, doing that one time with her. W- yeah, you got to be confident in your sexuality, right? Rob? You have to. Yeah. Good night, broken Baker. Thanks for stopping in. We hey, you. I didn't even know Baker was in the chat. Hey, Baker. Good night. It's uh. It's like, it's like three or four. Yeah, it's like four a.m. There, yeah. What's he doing? Go to sleep, you weirdo. He never sleeps. Just gotta go to the gym. He said he's trying to go back to bed, but lay off the. So what are, do you have any goals for your channel, Rob? Survive. I mean, keep making <laughs> content. I mean, realistically, when I say survive, I mean find a, find a balance that works. Yeah, that's the thing. For me, I've got the. I'm a full-time litigator, and when I say that my the practice that I'm with is busy, I've got I think 60 active domestic litigation cases right now. What that are in, that are in active litigation? Wow, that's um, crazy. Now I've got two or three associates that help out on the different cases that we pass off between the partners, but caseload is wild. So I've got a full trial docket. That is the full-time gig, and then I've got. Um, you know, mischief manager. I'm engaged there, and we're we're moving into a house. And there's there's two two little kiddos, the mini mischiefs that are. I mean, we're it's a blended family, so there's a whole lot going on in my life where the channel is great. It's a great outlet, 
but I got to have my priorities where they're, where they are. Uh, off topic, I'm making an executive decision because I'm realizing mm -hmm. that I put all these little pieces in my, in my box and there's, uh, so I've recreated by the way. So I've recreated the one, right? Okay. So okay. like all the spots are in the right, you know, all the yeah. dimensions are there and everything. <laughs> then I turn the page. It's like four of them. I'm like, okay, uh, I'm gonna order. I'm gonna order some parts. I'm gonna come back to this. In the meantime, I'm gonna build the X-wing. There you go. Okay, there you go. <laughs> so F N 2.0. Hey everyone, what are we making tonight? To answer your question, Dave, why don't you go first? Yeah, I'm building an X-wing. Uh, <laughs> no. I was building this old Wild West set from the 1990s that I had as a kid, and I thought I had most of the pieces. Obviously, I don't. Um, look at, look at. There's so one, two, three, four, five of these things I needed. Yeah. No. And I wasn't going to build all five, so now I'm going to switch over to the X-wing. This is awesome. a pretty cool set, though. You need to order all the pieces, man. I well, I thought I did. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, Holla, do you want to go next, me, dear? We are building Darth Vader helmet bust. I don't know. It's cool, though. It's very cool. Hella cool. And Rob, what are you building? We've got the house from Op. Yes, he does. So cute. It's a cool build. Does it have the balloons, too? Yep. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, that's going to be amazing. I saw it at the store. It looked really fun. I almost bought it. I I just want to say we are 57 minutes in and I'm just starting my Lego build. Bahala. I don't want excuses. Right? Here's the Come thing. On, the X-Wing, it's like Dave, 400 pieces. It's an easy build. He's going to have it done in 20 it? minutes and start making fun of us because he had to start a new one. But yeah. it was only a, like 800 piece build, 400 piece build. The wings are all one piece. Easy. I, I got my Lego. Yeah. My I've got the roses for Mother's Day. for the, So for those of you oh, who yeah. don't know, on Mother's Day... Um, Brandy Churchwell, the 13th juror, um, is going to come back. And instead of building Lego, she's going to take my job, and I'm going to build a Lego set for the first time on stream. I'm excited so, about that. We get yeah. to interview Wendy H., y'all. Yeah. Do you I'm know Brandy Churchwell, time. Rob? You like that? Um, I know the name. I haven't seen any of the content or commentary. We had her on a um, couple like weeks. More true yeah. crime. She does she's do she does the trials, but she's really into like the true crime side of it. I think yeah. she's more kind of like Emily D. Is she no, she's not like Emily. She's not an attorney. She does. No. Um, so she she's has really a cool. podcast in addition to her YouTube channel, and she does a lot of deep dives on her yeah, podcast, and then she'll cover stuff on her YouTube channel, usually the trials. So right now she's going through a deep dive on Scott Peterson with his appellate stuff and yeah. with the innocent project and stuff. She's doing a lot of deep diving on that. So, um, but yeah, she's cool. Yeah. She's a lot of people that know, um, that follow, uh, recovery addict know her. She's, she's, they're like BFFs right now. I think not right He's now. He's another I mean. great guy that I've met through this. Yeah. I've yet to meet him. He seems like a sweetheart. I, I haven't met him in person, but actually engaged with him in that. Like she does do great air charts. Air. She's very famous for her charts. Brandy's I, awesome. um, yeah. She was I so just chatted with, with Steve Recovery. Is it Steve, right? Scott, Steve or Scott, Scott. 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 Yeah. Uh, I just chatted with him on the phone a little bit, um, but I haven't been on panel or really anything with him. Uh, but he's uh, he does good work. It's just that's the thing about this is that there's so many different interesting people that you get to talk to if you want to. Right. Or possible. you can kind of do your own thing, right? It's um, hard. The further you stretch, your, the further you stretch, like it. Leo, Julia, I think Leo's in bed now. Rob, yeah, where's Leo's the camera you had to show Leo? We need to see your Lego building. Leo's in bed. Oh, the the Lego build. Let me see. Mm -hmm. Switch to that camera. I think people would love so you're saying you get um you mean stretched out as far as like what the, the point of contacts and the people that you would stream with? Is that what you're meaning? Well, it's a lot. Like, there's there are so many people that we're talking to. Come on, find the focus. Why are you not focusing? Hello. There you go. Aw. Hold on. Sorry. That is really adorable. 
Oh my it really god, is. it's so cute. So Rob, I, I don't know if you heard me earlier, but I've, I've been at Disneyland all week, so I'm super attached to your Lego build right now. And oh, Valhalla's, cool. of course. And now Dave's too, because <sighs> Disneyland isn't just cute anymore. It's got Star Wars. What's the name of the cool ride I was telling you guys about backstage? What's it called? The Force Unleashed or uh, Rise of the Resistance. Rise of the Resistance. That's what it's called. Yeah, but it's the I forgot what they call it. Anyway, you guys have to go on that ride. It's so cool. It's, it's like super a, interactive. Wendy, it's called Rise of the Resistance. <laughs> rise. Yeah, Rise. Thank you. Thank you, David. Thank you. Sorry. And Zach they call in the chat. Rise. So wait. So check this out. You want to hear a funny story? So of course you do. So my kid and I, she's 13, and she I think, goes to Wait, wait, wait. Hang on. I think Wendy is crushing on Rob because I've never seen her so like hyped up for a guest before. Oh, oh, nice! Look at that. Oh, nice. <laughs> no, I was. You know who I fangirled the most over so far Stuff. was um, but Flux because I actually follow her and like I got to meet her on stream and I was like, oh my god, I have such a girl crush on her. Flux and I really, I really had. I, I'm of course Steve Gosney. I have like such a crush on because he's. If you don't, you're dumb because he's amazing. And I think I crushed on almost everybody. Um, Joe is hot. Can I just say that? Well, you did. I don't know if you can, but you did. <laughs> I, I, like, I like the logic a lot. I thought he, well, I think he's, I think he's handsome, but I also think he's hot. There's something hot about him. I think Wendy is attracted to intelligence is what I think it is. So bad. Like, yes, yes. That gets me. And Megan Fox, I, she has a new fan in me. I did not. I really like her. Megan's awesome. Yeah, she, I we've actually I really enjoyed all of our guests. So if I'm leaving anyone out, I'm sorry. I just yeah. Anyway, we rope dropped. So for those of you who aren't Disney fans, rope dropping is when you get there at like seven to get in line because they actually at eight they drop. They literally drop a rope that you can get into the park. So all these crazy Disney people get there at like seven at the latest to line up. Mind you, she stuff. says these she's crazy there. Disney right. people <laughs> she's while she's the, there. Yeah, she's, totally. And you're, totally. you're literally telling us about this right now. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> so we went, we rope dropped so that we didn't have to wait four out because we're there during spring break. So each ride is like two hour long waiting, you know, at least. Ugh. Well, Yeah. And I'm not a, I'm a VIP B-I-T-C-H. I'm not a like, I'm not a two hour waiting in line B-I-T-C-H. So I get the genie pass. I get all the lightning. Okay, I don't care. I have all that. Those are so much money. Yeah. I don't care. I'm a VIP B-I-T-C-H. So Wendy, Wendy does okay, we think. Yeah. <laughs> she died. <laughs> died. So the um so we rope drop this damn ride. So we get there, we have to get about five in the morning, walk over to whatever. We're almost to the, we're almost to the, what's it called again? The rise, rise, rise of the, the rise. resistance. Yeah. Rise of the resistance. Yeah. But you know, people say the rise, the rise. So you get there. We're almost to it. It takes for my feet already hurt from the day before we're running. I'm a little chubby. I shouldn't be running, but I ran anyway, almost there. And the whole crowd just stops and we're like running into people. Like it's like, like a bunch of idiots. <laughs> The ride got the ride shut down. It hadn't even opened. The park hadn't even opened yet, and the ride was shut down. So we did all that work for nothing. Oh, that sucks. It sucks. Well, that was like a horrible story, right? You got to tell us that. All the build up to just disappointment in the end. What yeah. the hell, Wendy? I'm the worst storyteller <sighs> ever. Well, we did end up going, obviously, because I was talking about the ride. But Obviously. so we what we did was I actually since we were so close at the front of the line and nobody in back of us knew that the ride had shut down yet. We hurried up and got on Indiana Jones. We did Pirates of the Caribbean. We did all the rides that usually take two hours. We were like third in line. So that was cool. So we did. We did go on some cool rides. Just not the rides. We did do rides you, later. And it's amazing. Do it. Rob, do you go any closer other than the East Coast? Like, do you give the state that you're in or no? No, Virginia. He told Virginia? you the courthouse oh. in the yeah, street. Yeah, Northern Virginia, Fairfax Courthouse. That's my Where courthouse. Johnny oh, yeah, Depp was that's right. That's the, right. The, I wasn't paying attention. Jesus Christ, man. Oh. <sighs> Aston answered. Aston answered. <laughs> For sure. Uh, that's cool. We're, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll figure this out. Uh, <laughs> He's all flustered because he had to start over. Someone in the chat. Room. Some of the chat was making a comment about how I wear my hat backwards. That is actually something that's intentional 
as a respect to you guys because when I wear my hat forward, can't see I'm your looking. Face. I'm looking down at the Legos. You can't see my face. You can't see nothing. We appreciate oh. you. Well, I do, apparently I don't have the respect for the chat because I always wear my hat this way. David does not. He does not. No, this is my show. There are you're all just here. <laughs> <laughs> We're just along for the rise of the resistance. Welcome to the shit show, Rob. <laughs> oh, you 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 got no idea. Uh, my streams are usually worse by far. I doubt that. Nothing so could be what, <laughs> what um what's been some of the cons like I don't know. Do you have any concerns long term with streaming, or do you think this is going to be viable? What are your thoughts on that? I think it'll be viable. I think it's, if anything, it's going to be a concern about fatigue. Um, like I'm saying, the biggest part is making sure that you you don't have wear yourself that, out. You don't wear yourself out. You can this. It can become very unhealthy where you essentially are burning the candle at both ends and the older you get the the those candles burn quick mm -hmm. you get tired that's so why that's, i that's, that's why i had to take an official retirement um mm. so that people don't expect streams out of me and then when i stream they're happily surprised that's that was the idea um because i wasn't able to time management uh time manage this whole thing i got you know people would send me invites like we talk about you know, good logic. I used to hop in his chat and he'd send me a link and I'm like, Oh man. All right. Let me get out of bed, you know, and I, I go and join him. And then, you know, you're not sleeping. And then I stopped chatting. I told him when he was on for Lego law and, um, he, uh, I told him, I said, I stopped chatting cause you kept sending me a link. He's like, don't ever feel obligated. Uh, I'll send you, I'll still send you a link. Just don't ever feel obligated. So yeah, I, I always uh, say it's an invitation, not an expectation. Yes. Oh, that's nice. I like that. That is good. Well, that's the thing, though, right? Especially when you're a small creator. If you get an invite from a, a much larger channel, you got to go, right? Like if the that's first time the, that how that's that is the scary part. Yes. That's where you actually have yes. to take a step back and you have to focus on yourself and your health first. Yeah. And a lot of people I don't think can can balance that very well. I think a lot of people struggle Art. with that. Well, I think a lot of and you got to be like, listen, I'm not getting out of bed. <laughs> My wife is laying with me, and uh, to go stream and talk to some guys on the internet. Right. Um, I'm gonna stay right here next to my wife, where it's comfy and warm. Yeah. <laughs> it's comfy See, and warm. I don't know if CA is for Canada or California, or if it's just CA. But CA Human, thank you for the ten dollars super chat. Wow, Lot and Lumber, great to see you again. Good to see you too. I I, I haven't gone anywhere. Good to see you over here. You have. Rob Da Vinci Moore wants to know oh about God. Google Maps. Did I say that right, Da Vinci? Yeah, you 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 did. Uh, so oh, have you guys heard about the? Did you guys hear about this case, the wrongful death lawsuit against Google Maps? No, no, what's no? This? Do tell. So there's a dad in North Carolina. Uh, two kids had just recently moved. I think just I think it was Hickory he was living in. But had just recently moved there, um, hadn't lived there very long term, and wanted to host his daughter's birth or wanted to have uh, the family was setting up the daughter's birthday party. And the birthday party was a, um, a sleep uh, camping, right? So they went to someone else's house, one of their friends' houses, and all the kids set up sleeping tents in the, in the big ha in the inside because it was raining outside. They set up sleeping tents. Um, uh, they all did, then they watched a movie or something like that. Well, then mom takes the kids home. Dad stays behind to help clean up. Dad begins driving home. Google Maps routes him home. And Google Maps sends him down this road over a bridge that was not there. And the first page of the lawsuit is literally a photograph of what that what the edge of that bridge looks like without, without the uh, – what am I doing here? what the edge of the bridge looks like without um, any signage. There was no signs, no posted, no nothing. So you you literally just, you see trees. You do not see the edge. There's nothing that blocks it off. He drove off the edge. So I was reading through it and 
in the, the ending are- of who? Hmm? Resulting the in dad, the-, the dad died. Oh my god. Yeah, kids were young too. So it gets more interesting because the lawsuit alleges, and they have the receipts to post it, that Google had received for the past nine, I think nine years or something to that effect, had received notification that the bridge, hey Google, your map is wrong. The bridge is out. They never updated it ever. And I was sitting here looking at this and I was kind of wondering how the lawsuit was going to be. And I started reading the allegations and I was going, all right, I see the liability. And Ian comes in and joins the stream and has 1000% the opposite take. Like what? Like, like going hard in the paint opposite take. Okay. So his opposition then gets my back up and I throw my foot down, even though I can argue the case from both sides, but I throw my foot down and then Ian and I are just going at each other <laughs> like to the point where we're saying, I don't get where you're making this point. It's a stupid point. You're an idiot. Like, <laughs> Cause you know, that's what I think of when Robin and Ian are arguing is, Oh, these guys are both idiots. That's my first reaction. <laughs> but it was, it was so contentious that I, I think Kurt was on the stream too. And Kurt just kind of sat back and just crossed his arms. and was just watching us just <laughs> yelling at each oh, other. Oh, I, I believe I imagine. have heard about this. I didn't see I, it. And, and then the chat starts chiming in with who they who they're buying into, yada yada yada. And it was, and the chat ended up being more in Ian's favor than mine. And I said, that doesn't make him right. <laughs> 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 so oh, that's funny. Every now and then, like because you know, the the ability to make a joke about a, a Google map or a map or a map being wrong, it comes up a lot. Get every now and then well, it was a whole in. thing on the office with Michael Scott driving into a lake. Well, it, it just it, and then you had another oh, yeah. case. Was it about two months after that? Google settled the case for a couple million dollars, where someone was driving. They drove off uh, a ravine into a lake or something like that. Oh, yeah. um, so it was it was really interesting because the the chat was very divided ian was really emotional and that was what i thought i actually talk about this stream because i think it was one of my favorite examples of what i love about this showing people that you can disagree vehemently very passionately like and not back down on your point but still have respect for each other that is Rob, so you have to be Ian's enemy now, don't you know this? You gotta start trash <laughs> us. You, have to you gotta start on, trashing him on Twitter. Him on all the platforms now. I mean, come on, that, get with right. it, man. As a matter of fact, now that you're on the stream, we officially hate Runkle too. Runkle, no, you're that's right. Right. disavowed. You can't come here ever, <laughs> ever, ever, ever. I actually no, uh, so I have a serious question about that case because I hadn't heard of the case. Why isn't the municipality that didn't put up any barriers? Oh, private road. Private road. Yeah. Okay. Private, that the makes road sense. is private. So the landowners on the other side of the bridge owned it. And now we all agreed they were liable. Like they, they like they are. They, they're liable. I'm sorry. You, you don't put up any signage before uh, a bridge that's out. Um, no, that's completely foreseeable consequence. What yeah, but the, the private property owners don't have money to make any. Yeah, what are the parameters the, about yeah, the private the property, though? What was is that? A, I said, what are the parameters surrounding the private property, though? Is this like a like a there is should a public be easement? nobody there ever? Like, it, it's no. A I mean, imagine, road. imagine that there's imagine that there's a road. Let me see if I saw the lawsuit. John Common for a five dollars super chat. Sing it, and it seems to me streamed your lives like a candle in the wind. I think that's what you wanted. Hi, John. Thank you. Wendy sings much better than I do. I can also pronounce people's names. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. Yahoo Maps. I need. I need to uh, go cry now. I'll be right back. All right. You're gonna cry. Don't oh. don't tweet about me now. If the chat knows when that stream was, I think I still have the lawsuit. Yeah. Anyone in chat know? Help out our dear friend Rob. Don't forget, we want to see your outro too. We got time. We got plenty of time. So there's a 20, also, for the entire 
for the entire panel, crinkle or fold? I don't know what that's about, John. Crinkle or fold? Toilet paper? I'm going to need some I, more information. I fold, by the way. I like, feel like it's my money. Wait, I fold. What's crinkle toilet paper? I think it's. Love. You think it's about is that what the toilet? is that what the question is? Is the question oh, toilet paper? It might be. I, I think you're right. I always think it's, about is money. it like is it scrunch it up or fold it? Is up? it like a wad or or is it folded? Oh. Fold, fold all day, fold, fold. Well, Wait, what are you about? About? So. oh yeah, dude. Oh yeah. No, I missed the you're, question. You're a crinkle. I'm a buncher. Oh no, like yeah. I'm a folding bunch. Like it's oh, like a no. it's a it's an organized bunch. Okay, so I'm coming in halfway through this conversation, and I feel like this is somewhat vaguely sexual. What are we talking about? <laughs> Toilet paper. We got crinkle, a oh. crinkle or fold, David. Uh dude wipes. Thank you, but Dave. Wait, no, 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 no. You're not going in. You're not going in. You're not going in, the, not going in at, with those as the first swipe. Oh yeah, first swipe. Oh yeah, oh, all the way oh, through. Oh yeah. Oh, yikes. And they're they're good for the septic tank too. No, do not put them in your septic. Don't do that. Yeah, they're all natural plant fibers. That's not true. Septic Ask my shape. plumber. It doesn't, my plumber sound like it. <laughs> doesn't sound like well, a good we'll, idea. we'll see when the when the when the plumber comes out this this summer. Yeah, when especially the, don't you guys come out in the country-ish. Like maybe you have septic or do you have like a normal, you know, like no, I have septic. Uh, no, it's all septic. That's I'm why sure. that's why it's that particular brand. Oh. Who, by the way, it was recommended to by one of maybe our future guests on here. Um, Ooh, if nice. I can ever get in touch with them, um, Rory Sutherland. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That'd be cool. That'd be really. He's cool. a he's an interesting dude. He's a marketer out of um out of England. Um, he's just got a, a a neat way of seeing the world. So so what attracted me to this guy was he's talking about like uh how to, how to market your product, right or how to compete with the marketplace or things like that. And he said, all right, so take Coca-Cola, the number one soft drink, you know, non-alcoholic soft drink um, manufacturer in the world. So what do we need to do to compete with them? We need to sell more, you know, higher volume at cheaper prices that taste better, right? That's the, that's the, sort of the three criteria. And you wouldn't be fired suggesting that. He's like, but the number one competition that comes out is Red Bull. Smaller cans, twice as expensive and tastes like shit. Uh, and so he's just got a neat way of looking at the world like that. And uh, so I want to get him on here and talk to him. But he's the one who recommended those. He's That's like, actually why, the best why, why do we use dry paper? Because we're, cause we're co in Spanish, we say because you're cochino. That's cochino. Cochino means like, it literally means like a pig, but like it's gross, disgusting, nasty. Like, Sucio. Yeah, a yeah, little bit. Thank you. And I was like, you know what? He's right. And I went out and ordered some. <laughs> no, that's the, I like that brand too. Nick, Nick Starrell, thank you for the 50 sex. Um, Rob, if you get one trial, I think Rob already saw this. I just you get one trial per year, uh, set a Georgia Rico trial. Get a Georgia, no. Georgia Rico the trial. Is, a, the answer is, the answer is a hell no. Right. Uh, no. Anything to do with that case. Either. No oh my way. Gosh, it's, no, it's not, it's not that case. It's, it's the Georgia Rico statute. That statute is it, it sets up for a nightmare. Any one of those, any case that's brought under that Rico statute is a freaking nightmare. Oh, damn. well, the charging truck than regular oh, Rico. Nice. What was that? How is it different the, than a regular the underlying Rico? act? Doesn't even have to be necessarily criminal in nature, from what I understand. I haven't done a deep yes. dive into it. Um. Thank but that, that's so one of the so yeah you're things. sitting there you're sitting there basically the under yeah i mean that's hitting it on the money like you basically allege well take the ysl case uh rap music lyrics that is somehow part of the conspiracy yep see that's which the thing. should be absolutely insane first amendment should be protecting that all over the place yeah. <laughs> thank you julia julia we... sorry go oh ahead. lawn lumber scroll up for chat from ballet girl with the name of that FNF Corey Richens, eight passengers in seven minutes is the timestamp. The Friday night of Corey Richens, oh, eight passengers in seven minutes. Is that how, thank you, Julia. It's very sweet. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, oh the, so the, the YSL, the, the, the Google Maps. I have the I have the lawsuit pulled up, shared backstage. Oh, 
Sorry. You ready to pull it up? We can go through it. I mean, you can if you want. It's not going through it. It's just showing you guys because I wanted to show you what 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 that picture looked like. Oh, yeah, that. yeah. Oh. Hold on. So imagine, like, coming upon that at in the middle of the night, rainy, low visibility. 40, 40 miles an hour. Yeah. I wouldn't. I wouldn't make it. <sighs> no signage. No nothing. Yeah, I feel like there should be a sign or something. I personally, if that were my private property, that would not, that wouldn't even be, I wouldn't even allow that for my own safety, let alone anyone who would come upon it. I don't even understand that. What state was that in, Rob? North Carolina. Mm. So, and then they actually, so as part of the lawsuit, let me see if I can find the other image. Yeah, so that's what he drove off of. You can see how long the bridge has been out. You can see over here, like the trees planted on the other yeah. side. That's Naglet. Oh, I'm gonna be quiet because that's the that. that's the route. The mm -hmm. area where it's marked in red is the area where the bridge was. It's Google Maps was, and here's the thing: as of the day they filed the lawsuit, Google Maps was still sending people over that. So even after even after the the this death the death occurred, look. It's thanks still. for your report. Now, detrimental reliance is that the, the uh, like the underlying basis of the, I the I went I went on a yeah detrimental reliance but I went on a price liability like your the product you're advertising what you're marketing is a map and it's not just a map because maps can be wrong you're you're marketing and advertising a live something that, that has a live update I mean the yeah. thing is the thing is so good that it tells you the traffic it tells you where things are stopped it tells you where there's accident it tells you where cops are it'll I was gonna say it'll tell you when cops are set up in speed traps it, was that his car that we saw the photo of by the way yep so M young to answer your question I you know I I drive the same route to my office and back home or to wherever I'm going and back home every day. I know how to get there, but I use Google Maps to tell me if the traffic is heavy and if I should go an alternate route. Right. Uh, even though I know exactly where I'm going. So mm -hmm. I can see that uh, products liability uh, aspect of it, which um, I feel like is, uh, is, is more of a, it's not strict scrutiny or not strict. Uh, it's not, um, not strict scrutiny. What's the word I'm looking for? It's not, um, Strict liability, but it's a lot easier. I feel like at the end of the day to prove than um, than detrimental reliance. Yeah. Has oh, somebody asked if Google Maps has fixed that yet? I don't know. Yeah. When when the lawsuit when I pulled up to cover it, I want to say it hadn't fixed it. Um, I can't remember specifically, but e either way, it was pretty. It took a minute. So what was uh, Ian's position on it? Why did he think that Google wasn't liable? Basically, the, the, the act falls on the driver. It's your responsibility to maintain adequate safeguard and control over your vehicle, period, end of story. So is 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 there comparative uh, fault in uh, North Carolina? Did they talk about that at all? Or? That part I didn't remember. Okay. What's comparative I could fault see, I could... for the rest of us in the class? Sure. So comparative fault is, yeah, is when, yeah, you're either 51% responsible yourself as the plaintiff, then you can't recover the other side. So the idea would be is like if someone, if, if the fact finder determines that there's like two defendants or, or the plaintiff himself is 40% at fault, okay. then Thanks, if you don't have that, then then they could recover sixty percent of their damages because the the defendant sixty percent at fault. That's the idea behind it. And Got I it. screwed up my piece somewhere. How the hell did I screw this up? Um, but anyway, so that's what I was wondering. I feel like if that was if I were the owner of the property, I feel like I would have would have something up. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying if I. Oh, the 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 owner. I mean the the owner's not even a question. Owner's liable. Owner just doesn't have money. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's that's the underlying issue. Oh, however, yeah, yeah, they are. However, if nobody had a had a business being on their road, you know what I mean? Like, it, it doesn't it doesn't matter if it's if, matter. it's if it's a public access easement, like it, like that road a, being there, and it was being publicly traversed. Oh, oh, okay. We have that uh, similar issue, not an issue, but we're dealing with that in our township now too. There's a a 
a private road that's designated as a public um, public easement, not a public easement, a public road, essentially, but it's owned privately. And now the property owners want to say no more. We don't want people driving down this anymore because we're going to redevelop this. And they actually have to go through the township and get the township to agree to no longer have this as a public access road, even though it's a private road. In any other circumstance, you feel like they should just be able to put up a fence and say no. Um, so it happens. Uh, Wouldn't you have, like, so in this situation, right, somebody's being held accountable for, for what happened on their private property, which is how that would go, right? If, if somebody gets injured on your property, generally that's coming out of your home insurance plan, right? Mm -hmm. So wouldn't that yeah. be justification in itself to be able to take back the the municipality or the, the public easement aspect of it? Well, wouldn't it be no, because in fact what you what they could do is they can impose additional responsibilities on the property owners. Uh yeah, I mean let me let really me explain to. this. Explain this and the best way to explain this that I've thought of is a town. Towns are they are private property owners that well they're they're a town owner but they're a different owner than the city or county or state so the town owns the property but the state still has every person in the state has the right to drive on the property even though the town owns it because that that is a part and function of it now the state has superseding rights where the state can come in and put in additional requirements rip up part of the road they might have to reimburse the town for the things they do but the state has the ability to come in and do those things or require those things because the state is a higher authority than the town Okay. Um, if you have a road that you know is being publicly traversed, and if it's been publicly traversed for, in this case, probably more than 20 years, which would be adverse possession, I don't, I mean, I think it's pretty solid that you now have a responsibility to continue to care for it, provide for it. Now you have the added responsibility of knowing it's a public road. If they put up, a chain hanging a sign saying road closed yeah. every well i don't know if they could have but i feel like everyone would have been off the hook yep um, or even even if they had put up flashers beforehand yeah, not I was even gonna say, I would put up, these cones or something you know, like even so i had a bunch of yard work done once and if the the landscaper didn't do it but i did it like hello because you know i'm halfway intelligent I put, cone, even though it wasn't like a big deal, I put cones around the thing. I went and bought that caution tape and I put a whole thing. And I didn't even live on a main road, but I did that. Because number one, I care about if a kid fell in there or someone riding a bike. But also, I care a lot about my assets and I don't want it to be sued. Great. <laughs> Spoken like a rich woman. Um, <laughs> how rude, sir. <laughs> Well, how long did you say that uh, Google Maps was redirecting people onto that roadway? Years. Right. Years crazy. and years and years. And obviously, the municipality or whatever sort of governing agency wasn't concerned about it because they didn't say to the guy, hey, you need to fix your bridge. I don't know. All kinds of weird things pop My up. My city in doesn't care. They would have let it crumble. They want the homeowners to pay for everything fmm 2.0 thank you for the five dollar super chat dave are you currently or are you doing crumbly sentencing dave rob under what circumstances yeah. would you ask a judge to let you your client live with you i saw this reporting <laughs> while this reporting holy crap oh i saw that so uh, so what they're yeah. talking about is a sentencing mem uh sentencing memorandum uh, so if you guys don't know, James and Jennifer Crumbly have been both found guilty of involuntary manslaughter for the death of four students that their son shot in a school shooting. And uh, sentencing is on Tuesday. Yes, first of all, I will be streaming that live. Uh, secondly, they're facing up to 15 years each for, um, for the four deaths. So it's a maximum of 15 years. We do... Uh, concurrent sentences in Michigan. They're only going to get 15 years. Now, the state is asking for 10, and the defense filed their sentencing memorandum, which is basically where you score out the guidelines, you say what they're eligible for. And I haven't done that, although I promised to, but then I got busy with like real work. Um, but it sounds like Jennifer might be eligible for probation, not jail time. Um, 
or some sort of straddle cell where she doesn't necessarily have to do jail time for whatever reason. And uh, if that's the case, they could say, listen, we don't want you to just do this. We, you know, you could do house arrest, but she doesn't have a house because, you know, she's been in jail yeah. for the last two years. Three years. What I what I think they're asking for is sentence her to time serve and then let her do house arrest for the rest of her probation. But since she doesn't have a house, apparently her attorney is offering the opportunity for her to live in her guest house. I see a whole host of ethical obligations or violations. Problems, with that. Yeah. 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 Um, but it's, it's interesting. I mean, she definitely cares about her client, but I don't know if I'd put myself in that ethical dilemma. Yeah, she's got a bunch of kids. Yeah. She's got like five kids. I think. Mm. Boy, the public already hates her. They're going to really hate her if she lets Jennifer live with her. She's, hopefully she's never rat. running for district attorney. So cute. Ooh, let's see what Rob's got going on. All right. Oh, there it is. Oh my God, it's so cute. That's awesome. There were no looks uprights like a, at Disneyland, by the way. It looks like a little Polly Pocket from back in the day. Oh, the Ooh, I have a Polly Pocket with a pineapple. Of course you do. I got it for uh, for the experts' birthday or uh, Chris Halloween street. Halloween. Halloween. There it was. I don't remember your a Polly Pocket on the Halloween street. Oh, I do. I do. I dressed good. as oh. a certain YouTuber that likes to play with toys, and I got a... Oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now you remember. Yeah. <laughs> there's, a, there's a YouTuber that, that has a toy collection, and he sells toys, I guess, or a collection or whatever. He makes them. But, so I dressed up as... Or he makes parts of them, too. Yeah. And so I dressed up as him, but I had this pineapple Polly Pocket from the 90s that I used as my little toy figure. Is Valhalla going to show us what he's doing now? Are you just... on my Lego? Yeah, let's see how you're doing, bud. Hold on, progress let me report. A... Progress report. Very. Oh, I like the red. Well, you won't be able to see any of that. Is that like his burn? Huh? It's, yeah, it's like inside of his helmet. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, there's his face. Love it. Love We're getting face. there. How are you doing, Rob, with your build? How's it going? One second. No worries. Rain Man YYC $5 super chat. In true Canadian fashion, I'm going to use the outcome of the Calgary Edmonton game tonight to decide if Ian is correct. As you should. Canadian logic. I love That's it. The... <laughs> oh, you a hockey guy, I'm Rob? I'm going to go to Canada. I love, I want to. I feel like I would love it there. Said nobody I used to ever. have more time to watch hockey. Like I was, I watched. I used to go to all the Caps games. I remember when they were, um, their colors were blue and gold, and they it was the MCI Center, not the Capital One Arena. Oh, really? Long time ago. Yeah. Um, and then when they won the Stanley Cup, I loved that. That was probably one of the coolest years. I just haven't been in a while. It's so hard to get downtown these days. You had. Quite possibly one of the best hockey players to ever put on a pair of skates. Lead that team Obi? for like, oh yeah, will be for like twenty yeah. years. Yeah, dude played forever. He still plays, right? Or no, he retired just a year or two ago. Who? Obi. Ovechkin. David, excited utterance wants to know: Are you shutting down your your channel, David, because of the trolls? <laughs> Dave, you know, you know, David loves the trolls. Come on. Was that oh, I was supposed to make two of these. That's the problem. Oh, I got um, like stuck on a spot here. Tracy Fagan asks, and I and I under my breath whispered, "I hope not." Does Crumbly set a precedent for the other parent for other parent? It doesn't technically set precedent, but it will certainly lead to more people being charged in that way. Well, and just them being charged is setting like yeah. a precedent to some extent. Yeah. Oh, we can do this. We'll try this. Yeah. I said even if they were acquitted. It's not going to prevent people from not trying this in the future. And I just feel like it's a horribly dangerous precedent to set, period. One of the biggest when, lies in, in all prosecutors say is this is an exceptional case. Yep. They always. Well, that's they, how they get it. They get yep. it with the exceptional cases. That's how they yep. justify it. And everyone gets behind them. And then they're going to be like, oh, well, well, we're just going to do it in this case as well. And then we're just going to do it in this situation. And then it turns into. Um, everyone and their brothers getting charged with stuff. 
David, have you ever met Richard Hogue? Julia wants to know. I he have just, not, although I drive past his office every day. I go from my house to his to, to my office. Yeah, oh, yeah, I drive right by it. Um, I, I know exactly where his office is, and uh, I've actually I've um, I stopped by and knocked on the door once, but he wasn't there. This was a couple years ago. He stayed at my hey, house too. Hey. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Elise Charlene Fine Art for four ninety nine super chat. Thank you for the super chat, everybody. I went to my undergraduate at Siena Heights College in Adrian, Michigan. Ooh, Adrian. very cool. David's always happy. Michigan's to have an fellow awesome town, or awesome town, awesome. Michigander, Michigander, Michigan. Michigander, Michigander. Michigander. Yeah. Someone from yeah, Michigan. How do I know that? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I live I'm, in I'm California, so I don't know anything about anyone else other than my state. Just we live in a bubble here, and Valhalla is just praying that when our state falls off the earth, that I'm not in the state. That's what I'm hoping what, for. California? I yeah. Really Best case it. scenario, Wendy escapes before then. I'll probably be like at, at Dollywood or something. Yeah. <laughs> How are you doing, well, David? You know she's going down. She loves, she loves uh, her California, and she's going down with it. I'll, you know what? I will go like down the with captain the of the Titanic. I'm third generation native Californian. I ain't going anywhere. Don't worry, Tennessee and Montana and all the other states that hate us because we raise your housing prices. Don't worry. I'm not coming for you. Right Whereabouts here. in California? I'm in the Sacramento area. Oh, I it used was... to live in the Bay Area. No way. Awesome. Danville. No way. Oh, God. Oh, speak about money. Okay, girl. Okay. That was that, that it was. A little bit different back when I lived there. Oh, it was. Ever since the I was a little streets. kid, we always thought that's where all the rich kids. Live. No, not the mean streets, but nice. Yeah, I'm in Sacramento area, and I was born in Riverside. I'm like from the. Oh. My dad was in the army, and I was born, so I was born at, on an Air Force base. The military brat. Yeah, I can tell you all the cities where I have lived and was born, but nobody knows them, so I don't talk about. Them. It's not that nobody. I don't knows. know where Sacramento. I don't know what this nobody place. cares. You don't know this is the yeah. capital of California? <laughs> no. Why would I know that? You don't that? care about California anyway. That's why. No, I absolutely do not. Yeah, that's probably the reason. I just I just like forget it exists. Yeah, Rob, I'm the I'm the unicorn in in all of the this community. Like I'm a actual real liberal and I actually love California. Like, you know, I'm a bleeding heart and I'm a tree hugger and all that. Stuff. You are my 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 rule on politics is that I hate all politicians. They can all jump off a cliff, and I can never see them again. That a boy. I've, I've well, lived I kind of grew DC up in the state capital, so I I can't long. say that. But <laughs> my godfather's a, um was a state senator most of my all of my life. Actually, he just retired this this December. So see, I do I don't love all politicians, but he's amazing. Did you say you lived in D.C.? Did I just hear that right? I did. No, I lived just. Oh, sorry. oh yeah, Megan did. Or not Megan. Gosh, Wendy did. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I did. Oh. Only for three months. Where? Me? Where in D.C.? I lived in, uh, actually lived in Arlington, but I worked at the Pentagon. So. Oh, that's right. I knew that. Yeah. I knew that. Yeah, how did you not know that? I did. It was so fun. I'm going to D.C. in August, and I'm looking forward to it. I get to give a tour oh. of, like, off-the-beaten-path kind of tours, so this could be a lot of fun. Really? That's yeah. cool. I want to go on that. Well, like, buy the tickets now. I'll go. I'll go. You know me. I love to travel. I'm like, I'll go. Let's go. <laughs> Someone has a trip planned. I'm going. Elise Charlene Fine Art, $1.99 Super Chat. Wendy, do you have a channel or just host? That's so sweet of you to ask. I am actually a, technically a guest. I'm emceeing, I am MC the Lego streams. Um, I do not have a channel and I don't desire to have a channel. So um, I just hang out with the guys here a couple times a month and have a really good time. But thank you for asking and welcome. She helps we've keep been us trying on to, track. Yeah, we've been trying to convince her to do a channel, but she won't. She's no. got too much like real world like life to live. Right, you want to be tied down talking to <laughs> yeah, all you Disneyland to go to. <laughs> yeah, I've got oh my gosh. So, I let's see, Disneyland. I just got back from Disneyland, and and I, by the way, chat, I'll have you know, I do come home from my trips early just to hang out with the guys. So, Disneyland was supposed to be till Sunday, but I'm like, no, this girl has to stream. I'd and, rather do Lego. And I'm speaking of streaming trips, I'm gonna go. Um, the expert and the white rabbit are, and a bunch of people are gonna be. I want 
want to say hosting because like I don't want to put that on them, but like a lot of people Dolly are meeting Wood. at um, Dollywood. Oh yeah. In May. Oh, yeah. And May 16th and 17th, we're going to go to Dollywood. Very excited. I'm bringing my mother-in-law. It's going to be fun. I'm so excited. I'm mostly I'm mostly going to, to meet Valhalla in person and David in person. Aww. And Baker in person. And the expert in person. And the White Rabbit. And Miami Spice. And Danielle. I'm super. See, oh, yeah. She's just a fan. She has no... I, <laughs> yeah. If I had a channel... We, we, might, have, we might have screwed up here, Valhalla. <laughs> no. Yeah, you might have. <laughs> speaking of stalkers, I'll, speaking of GPS and Google Maps, I'll just... Right. <laughs> Put some little trackers on you. Guys. So, Rob, have you done any like uh, fan interaction stuff, uh, like IRL sort of stuff for fans at all? Not really. Um, They're all like, no, he hasn't. Well, it's time stuff. The always yeah. the issue. It's not, it's not close to it's just time. Tracy Fagans for ten dollars super chat says you can always stay at the Lawn Lumber B and B. Yep, I've I've hosted Ian Runkle twice, um, Joe, um, Rick, and Alita. Nice. That's so sweet. As they come through DC. That's really cool. I I'm have a, you been I'm a recognized? DC Sorry. Sorry, David. Um, just have you been recognized, uh, like on the street somewhere? Like, oh, I know you from the channel. Courthouse, a couple times. Yeah. Nice. What's that like? Uh very weird. I'm sure. Especially in that situation, because you're you're there as a, a like to work member of the court, right? Like yeah. you have to present yourself in a specific kind of professional manner. Yeah, you know, there was one time I was walking in DC. Um DC the the mall area, um, it's well known for essentially just being fields for like football or sure softball kickball and mischief her company had a uh kickball team and they all go to the bar afterwards so we were going to the bar they'd never met me before nice dude so they were going to the bar and we're walking towards this bar and and the one of the people that's checking people into the bar goes bob yeah, like from from Law and Lumber, like the YouTube channel. And it's like, yeah. And Ugh. all of Mischief's coworkers had never they had never met me before. Oh so wow! They, so they meet you for the first time. You're getting recognized as a YouTuber up in DC. Really, weird. that's, that's so really awesome. Cool. Redford said he's from Kansas, and when they went to Washington DC when he was a little kid, they met he met Bob Dole, and he gave him an embroidered sunflower sticker that he still has on his Bible. I love that. Nice. Bob I, Dole. I miss old school politicians. You're talking about you Me hate too. all politicians. I miss the Bob Dole. Yes, yeah. yes. To yes. be fair, I, I yes. like the old school Agreed. ones Agreed. when they all just pretended to play the game and yes. you know, oh, I hate you. You're an idiot. All right, now let's manners. figure this thing out. You know, even if it was fake, they had good manners. They were like, cool. okay, so so Rob, you're you do a lot of family law, right? And you yeah. get those attorneys that you know I call them Kool Aid drinkers. <laughs> what do you mean, Kool Aid drinkers? They drink. I call them Kool Aid they drinkers. drink their clients Kool Aid. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I can't stand those. Right Most on. of the ones that are actually productively um, resolved ahead of time are the ones where we're we're talking just like this, you know, just yeah. friendly about it and frankly about the situation. And then um, if we have a hearing, we might argue both of our positions, but we don't hate each other, and then we go out for a beer afterwards. Yeah. Those are the most productive cases. They're the most inexpensive cases. You want an attorney that's going to fight like a bulldog and drink your Kool-Aid? That's fine, but you're going to pay for it. Uh, but that's what I'll, I feel like I'll politicians used to be. In court. Like, I'll be your bulldog in court, but yeah, I'm going to try to avoid court if I can. Yeah, exactly. But that's how I feel like politicians used to be, where we're, we'll argue our positions, but at the end of the day, we still got to kind of have a government to function. Remember Judge, Although, Judge Wapner used to always say, why don't you ladies go have some tea afterwards? Or why don't you men go have a beer afterwards? Or whatever. Like, I know? don't know if I've ever watched Judge Wapner. Oh, really? He was the original People's Court judge. I, I yeah. know. Well, you're too young. I'm old. Him. Kristen M96 for the $5 super chat. Rob, you gave Ziggy origin story, but not the jury origin story. Yeah. I see how it goes. Uh -huh. Also, Rob, Look at Wendy's background. 
I think Kristen's talking about my rock and sock and robot. robot. Yeah. So the bot, the bot story is kind of interesting. Um, Let's hear it. Those of you who don't know, let me see if I can grab one of them. Interesting. McRae H. McRae H has a private road with a bridge. It's drivable, but they had it removed from Google Maps. Maps smart. These are the bots. Oh, now, the jury badges are from the Maya case where the, the jury got the, the name this jury. <laughs> so this bot has the I have questions on it. So you guys can guess what the glasses is to whose bot that is. Cute. Nice. Yeah. Love so it. during the depth stuff, one of the um, I forget if it was Taylor Lorenz or somebody. One of the one of the commentators was saying all of these these pro depth bot accounts that have shown up or popped up in the last year. Well, my I had I didn't have a Twitter account. I created Twitter because of social media accounts. So I was one of the people they were talking about, like the newly active accounts with a lot of followers that just clearly a bot, right? So I was laughing about that, and Kristen. Uh, was kind enough to make robots. And there was a joke that, you know, if you came and stayed at my house, the real you was probably hiding, or the real you was probably captive in the basement, and the bot got sent back. <laughs> so I was a robot factory. Outstanding. I, like that. I was a robot Good. factory, so Kristen started making the bot, so that I started amassing my little robot jury, and I built them a jury box so that they sit behind me, kind of just presiding over the live streams judging you for your dog well it's really cool because the bots have been such a feature in the channel that when ian had his charity live stream um kristen offered to make custom bots and i think they auctioned for i want to say uh over a thousand dollars each wow that's awesome that's super cool pretty amazing it's right. the one of the random things like so before i started streaming I, I was never a chatter. I didn't know what a what a chatter was or that you I mean I knew you could live chat, but I never did. I would just watch the trials, like you said, you know, if you were just watching trials and it was cool to have someone sort of in the background. And um so I I didn't know about the chat when I started streaming. I didn't know that that was a thing. And it's amazing how involved and committed some of the some of your chatters are and how much they care and how much they want to do for you it's really kind of cool it's really amazing um and it's I, scary i it's scary because you i don't you don't want to let them down and you try to do your best see but, you messed up see you started producing amazing content from the very beginning that was your mistake rob you got to be like me, right? Be like Valhalla. Just put out crap all the time. And then everybody's expectation stays super, super low. It's great. It's great. I get freedom to do whatever I want on YouTube. It's awesome. Hi. It's hard. Hi, Hi. kiddo. Good night. Love you, baby. Sweet dreams. Okay. He said, I love you. I'll go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Because if he's going to sleep, everyone's going to sleep. Cierra la puerta. Good night. Yeah. Gracias. So when's the right. wedding, Rob? No date selected. I mean, you got a house to house to move out of, house to move into. A uh, whole lot going on. Full law practice. We've kind of decided that we're going to end the new puppy, which was good. Time. Um, which was a wonderful idea. <laughs> it was a great idea, Rob. Brilliant idea. You know, <laughs> mischief, mischief's been asking for a dog for so long. Why don't we choose now? Right this second. That's the right best now. possible. Just right when you're super busy. Oh, God. Yep. Yep. Because you don't have enough on your plate. Let's add a child in the mix. It is wild. How long have you been practicing? But I've been practicing for since 2010 okay that's when i started as well rain man yyc thank you for the five dollar super chat from canada lived in clausen in luna pier michigan before coming back to canada oh you deported back to canada huh did i ever tell you my granddad got deported when he was like five no tell us yeah well i don't know much about it obviously it was before my time right but apparently um he was canadian and his parents split and somehow or another he was in the states and 
custody battle. He got deported, I think, twice when he was like five years old back to Canada. So, Wendy, we got that in common. Our family's getting deported and whatnot. I love it. That's crazy. (laughs) Yeah. So, my grandma swam. My grandma swam across the Rio Grande to get here when she was nine years old. Wow. Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm-hmm. Rob, I was going to ask you what what got you into the law practice. What what made you want to be a lawyer? I was really. It was really weird. Family of engineers, so um, I didn't. There wasn't a single lawyer in, in my entire family. I didn't know what I was doing. In High school chemistry. I was in AP chemistry, and I was looking at all these engineering schools. I was playing lacrosse. I was I was uh, being recruited by different schools for lacrosse, but I was looking at smaller and engineering schools for that. And my AP chemistry teacher told me it was a mistake that he thought I should go. He thought I was going to be a lawyer, hmm. and I ended up going to. A sorry if it takes seems like it would take forever to answer these questions. I'm just trying to find pieces at the same time. That's the beauty of Lego, man. That's that's the beauty yeah, of Lego right. questions. Good night, Torin. Uh, night, Torin. Thank you night. for the dollar soup. Gotta run, Rob. I love the pen. Oh. Thanks for letting me make the braid for you. Oh, you got a braid from Torin three. Yeah, Torin's, right Torin's there. It's got it's got robots on it too. Hell yeah. That's oh, that was yours. Yeah. Oh, dope. Um, Torin, I think we're working out a date to to be on the show with Torin. Jacob, yeah. I think we got it. I don't know if we got it figured out exactly or not. Quit letting him off the hook. He's got to answer my question. Sorry, my bad. Yeah, so I was I went to Stevens Tech in Hoboken, New Jersey, played lacrosse there until my knee got blown out. And at the when my knee got injured, it was kind of an opportunity looking at my GPA there wasn't great. So figured I was going to transfer. I transferred to NC State, and I was behind in credits. So it took me five years to graduate undergrad, and I wanted to be kind of decided I wanted to be a lawyer. So I went to a no-name law school, chased a girl down to Fort Lauderdale, Florida, rather than going to GW, which would have well been interesting. <laughs> I mean, it's very different caliber schools, right? So GW, great school, uh, Fort Lauderdale, and going to Nova Southeast University. It's a tier four school. But it was law school. I didn't know any better. And no one was a lawyer. So I go there. And I had always wanted to be kind of an environmental lawyer. I didn't know. I wanted to represent companies to help them navigate, like, EPA stuff. So, Wait, you wanted to be the bad guy in the, in the fight yeah. on the environment? <laughs> yeah. Parents, you know, parents were engineers, man. Like, Outstanding. Yeah. <laughs> I and trust me on the environment stuff, EPA. I'm sorry, EPA is a freaking broken system. It's, it's, it's a ridiculous. whole broken system, man. That's a it's freaking just, governmental agency. Anyways, so yeah, I wanted to do that. And there's a difference between uh, stand-up lawyers, and wheelchair lawyers. Well, when I graduated law yeah. school, like I said, I was wanted to be a swivel chair lawyer. Oh, sorry, Rob. Oh. The longer, the longer I was, I wanted to be a swivel chair lawyer, sit in a boardroom or sit in, a, in an office, didn't want to litigate cases, had zero interest in doing any of that. But when I graduate, they weren't hiring lawyers, and I graduated from a smaller law school. So I didn't really have a choice. So I ended up practicing for a solo practitioner in Woodbridge, Virginia. And I was trying a case my first week. After passing, my first week in in practice with him, it was we. It was months after I passed the bar, but it was my first week of actual practice. I end up in court, and the guy that was the managing partner had or the the, the solo had told me, "Oh, don't worry, it's just the first appearance." No, it's trial. Oops. Mm-hmm. <laughs> trial by fire. And then it's it kind of it, that's how it kind of. Went on from there once, and then I had one of my first federal cases, a bankruptcy case. I ended up litigating a, a complicated issue. Um, first time appearing in federal court, walk up. And, you know, so they, they call it the bar and passing the bar because then you're allowed to go in front of the bar. That chair rail that you see there, that's the bar. Right. Lawyers are allowed to pass the bar. They're allowed to go in front of the bar. Um, 
walk up in front. Judge says, counsel, will you note your appearance? And I speak into the podium, federal court. They've got the microphones that are really big. So I speak into the podium, Rob Morton for the debtor. And I hear my voice resonate. And my head like pops up <laughs> like it was the first time. I kind of fell in love with the practice of law. Nice. That's really cool. We've got some questions. Can we go to some questions? Because we've got some amazing yes, chat. Yes, Wendy, I'll let you ask questions. Thanks, David. Um, I think we already oh, we already saw the one from Torn. Thanks again for the five dollar super chat. FD Food Fairy, Wendy H. Need you to clear up. David Rob said they've been practicing since 22. Did they mean 22 years of age? No, 2010. Oh, 2000, 2010, yeah. Okay. 2000, 2010. Awesome. Thank you for clearing that up. Ablati Ablada. Will you have law talk with Mike on? I'm assuming that's to David and Val, or is that to Rob or all three? I don't know. Well, Anyone? Yeah, to have Rob law talk with Mike? Do we know him? Uh, well, everyone spoke at the same time, so I'll go. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, uh, yeah, he, we're, we're interested in interviewing all kinds of people on this channel. So, absolutely. yeah, he wants to come out. Absolutely. Yes. I've never met him. I've only met him in chat. Uh, he's 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 interesting. He's fun. I like him. Yeah, he's I mean, from he's in Chicago, uh, so he's got that going against him. But <laughs> he knows yeah. what the Lord is. That makes him cool in my book. I'll ask Rob when he gets back. Uh, Lindsay wants me to ask if he speaks or how how his Spanish is. Um, Jenny B wants to know what has been your most difficult or frustrating case. I'm assuming that's for David and Rob. Well, it's clearly not. Uh, for me. <laughs> I Remind streamed that I streamed case. that that Colorado case with the paramedics. That was difficult. Oh, maybe stream. she is talking about that. Yeah. Hi, Jenny. I think so. <laughs> Go ahead. Dave. I froze. No, I froze for a second. That's all. Oh, you did. Um, difficult or frustrating case. I had uh, early on. I had a DUI felony case that was troubling, and I was really like, I really wanted to win for my guy. I knew my guy was like guilty as hell, but I really wanted to win. And it was like upsetting to me that I couldn't really do anything for him at the end of the day. Um, I mean, we had a whole trial and everything and he was eventually convicted. Um, but I realized because I was caring more about his kids, the fact that he was going to go to prison for a little bit, um, it was sort of really emotional. And then I realized that I wasn't doing a good job for him because I was worried about all these things that didn't matter at the end of the day. Um, so that was a tough case and just forced me to kind of step back and realize what I'm doing here. I'm supposed to be rising above the bullshit, not drinking the Kool-Aid, as as Rob would say. And uh, so that was a kind of a pivotal case for me. That was a trial I had early on in my career. Rob, TS, what about you, Rob? That, you, that Rob has met him in Las Vegas. I think she's talking about Law yeah, Talk. Yeah, I, I met Law Talk with Mike in Chicago. Nice. Oh, nice. And somebody asked earlier, I don't know if you heard the question, Rob, uh, what's been your most difficult case? Probably second year of practice, uh, third party custody case. I represented mom and the kids were placed by mom with aunt and uncle um, several years ago. Mom cleans her life up and I'm litigating the case trying to get custody back to mom i win all the legal issues apply the standard that the judge wants to apply or the, that i want the judge to apply but the facts just didn't play out it sucked that one stuck with me for a while Next one was okay. one. Uh, the other one was where a guy got a protective order violation that was a complete bullshit protective order violation, complete bullshit, and the judge locked my client up. And I was the first time I actually remember crying over a case. That would be difficult to think. Yeah, being tough. being responsible for whether or not somebody stays out of jail. Well, that's the thing. That's that's what bothered me about my case. And I realized, you know, after the fact that what I was concerned about were the fact that like the, the cases that always involve kids are usually tougher. And I don't know if she was asking about like what was like an educationally challenging case or just a case that was hard to deal with. But um, 
I when you are I'll be back representing okay. someone who's clearly guilty. Uh, you have to understand that the best thing you could do for them is make sure, or you know, in society in general, is to make sure that the state does their job properly. Uh, because if they take shortcuts for the guilty, they'll take shortcuts for the innocent. And uh, so once I started looking at it like that, it was a lot easier to deal with some of the the outcomes of the case. Because at the end of the day, your client kind of, most often anyways, put themselves in this situation. Uh, and I'm not going to, I always say, I, it's like a parachute, right? A lawyer is like a parachute. We're not going to put you back in the airplane, but we're going to try to make the landing as soft as possible. And uh, so once I started looking at it that way, uh, some of the bad cases were a lot easier to deal with. Yeah, David, the one I'm talking about was one like, and I'm sure you might have had one or two, but it's the one that every attorney dreads more than anything in the world. The innocent person. Mm. Those are tough. Yeah, that was hard. It's and it becomes a very, very tough pill to swallow. Yeah, that so. must really. I think that's why so many of us have rallied behind Solomon Anderson's plight with the Zachariah Anderson case. Um, and, now, and David, doesn't, might... David doesn't take the stance that he think he doesn't. I don't think he's ever said whether or not he thinks he's innocent. I think. He takes the stance that many of us do that we just don't think that the that was a properly state, state didn't prove that. correct. They it was, did not prove it. Right. I, I've told this to Solomon's to, to Zach's brother's face, Solomon. You know, I yeah. said your brother could very well be guilty of this crime. To me, it doesn't matter at this stage. It wasn't it it wasn't uh proven, and the uh, the case itself was full of all kinds of irregularities and procedural mm -hmm. issues, uh and and at the end of the day, Zach did not have uh, you not have a fair trial. full due process. Yeah, right. but I was trying to be no, more. I mean, I'm a lay person, and I it. was shocked at the verdict. I was like, "What?" Um, we've got some. Super I wasn't chats. shocked at the verdict. I was shocked. I was shocked at what what the state got away with. Well, yeah. I was shocked at the verdict because I'm a lay person, but also as a, just as a lay person, I was shocked that he was ever even arrested. I was like, "What? Like, what is this crazy? Like, there's mistrial like, once, right?" Pardon? Yeah, yeah. First yes. one was a mistrial. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Lindsay, because uh, one of the key witnesses that establishes the timeline and everything else, yeah, um, changed her story after a private meeting with the DA, mm -hmm. uh, just a few weeks before the first trial, and that wasn't disclosed. Who made himself uh, a witness? Yeah, he made himself a witness as a result, but the judge didn't do anything. He's like, "Well, you nope. just can't question her, but otherwise, you're still in the case." And that whole Denny motion garbage, that was just too much. Let me, let me get yours. Let me get you. How you doing with let, are people wanting to see what Rob's, how Rob's doing? Very cute. Oh my God. I'm in I like that. the little house. So cute. Very cute. That's very cool. So, and I don't think I could build anything that intricate because my fingernails. So what's your also, primary uh, yeah. practice area, Rob? Sorry, right, Wendy, yeah, you have more questions. No, it's okay. Litigation. No, no, go ahead. Domestic litigation and complex bankruptcy cases. Say that again, okay. please. Domestic litigation. So so um, it's not as simple as just divorce. Basically, anything domestic relations related. If it's a modification of custody, if it's a custody oh, yeah. determination, all the, all the hard stuff. Emotional stuff. Yeah, I don't that's think I could what, do that. Um, that's what I do. I would say it used to be about half my practice. Now I'm getting more into more commercial litigation, business litigation. But I, it's still about maybe 20% of my practice is family law, uh, divorces, custody, things like that. I think Runkle's in the chat. Julia's saying, is hey, he? Runkle with the Bailey. I'm looking. Show yourself, sir. Hello. I'm pretty sure Hello. someone probably summoned him once we talked about the Google Map stuff. People in the <laughs> chat were saying if we talk about him long enough, he'll appear. <laughs> I know. It's it is you guys. The summons are real things. When someone starts talking about you on a stream, yeah. The number of people who are watching or who are channel channel participants, all of a sudden you get summoned. You get you get people that are saying, Hey, you know. Either it's Emily, Ian, somebody's talking about this. 
oh, I'll go pop over and see what's going on. Jump in. Nice. Oh, here he is. Yep. He says, yep, he's here. Well, I see you, buddy. Hi, sir. Yeah, see, that's the funny thing is, like, I didn't, I didn't think of the chat. And so then when I actually started getting people in my chat, um, and then I would get people popping in that would say, hey, you need to go talk to so-and-so or this channel. If I'm not streaming, they'll, they'll message me on Discord yeah. or Twitter or something. They'll say, hey, so-and-so is talking about you. You should jump over there. He, he has a question. Or he wants you on the stream. It's really interesting. It's a whole little weird little community. Not weird. But yeah, it's weird. It's a weird little community that you become a part of that I wasn't expecting. So are you enjoying it, though, Rob? Oh, I love it. Now, I my my big problem is I get overextended because I I'm like the person that goes to a restaurant that sees the the 16 ounce steak on the menu and goes I want that <laughs> so bad and I comes to my table and I start eating it and I get like a quarter of the way through and I want to I my stomach hurts so bad I'm from from a 16 ounce steak. Dude, I don't know what is going on. I can't eat. Like, I now just do the petite filet, man. I, like the six I ate like filet. two pounds of pot roast last night. Dude, at least. Six, <laughs> six, six, six ounce, a six ounce filet, perfectly cooked, is all I want. Just give me that. Okay. That sounds really but, good. Right now. I get overextended. So I want to do a lot of things. I, I love it. I love the ability. I love participating in the chat. I love people that are there. I tried to do Discord for a while. It was oh. the more that I tried to do, the further I extended, and the more I started doing the thing I didn't want to do, which is letting people down. So, that's why I quit. Uh, were, you know, I said, "All right, I'm done. I'm retiring." You because got tired of so letting much. everybody down. Well, I did because the thing is, is that you got to do more and more and more. I literally didn't have time for it, and I was like, I just have to make like a cold break. I'm just like, I'm done. Be not only that, um, I will get, this is kind of addicting. And once you start streaming again, once I started streaming again, it was like, oh, well, I could just do a little stream about this, right. a little stream about this, a little stream about this. The other day, like I'm supposed to not be streaming. The other day I spent like 12 hours streaming <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you know, I would jump on Baker's or Sean's or excited other or somebody, you know? Right. Uh, so by the time I'm done, I'm like, I'm counting it up. I'm like, yeah, I spent 12 hours today streaming. I shouldn't have done that. Yeah, I know. My, my problem is that because I'm working all day, the 12 hours, what was that one stream I was on with Jeff when he had one of his effort Fridays when I was doing the, I did the Jason Statham the closing argument. It was, it was talking about the litigators of old and Clarence Darrow. And I think I did a full stream on my stream. So from Friday at Friday at 8 PM, this is after a full work day, Darryl full work awesome. day begin Friday night frenzy at 8 PM that wraps at like one or something like that. And Jeff is doing his effort Friday and he's eight sheets to the wind. I don't know. <laughs> and it looks like he's he's gotten a lot better at it, but he there was a point when he was he was hitting the booze way hard. And I didn't think he was gonna I didn't think he was gonna have the capacity to turn off the stream. <laughs> so I was watching, and again, I jump on with them at like one. And before I know it, it's like five o'clock in the morning my time. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Five or six or seven. So it was something ridiculous. It was something ridiculous. Because the time does it passes. We've been here for two hours and nine minutes. Yeah, right. You, and it feels like it's only been like maybe twenty minutes or half hour or so. Or like I've been doing these forty-five minute streams. They feel like five minutes. By the time we turn them off, we're like, oh my! I can't believe that was even forty-five minutes. Um, time travels a lot faster when you're on the panel. Uh, and, uh, yeah, the time gets away with, uh, from you. And then by the time you're done, you're like, oh my God, like four hours have gone by. The hell am I doing with my life? <laughs> I got, I got a wife and kids. Where are my kids? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Stray. Welcome. Where have you been all night, girl? Hey, Stray has been in my discord harassing me. <laughs> Discord's a, a special kind of hell. I love Discord. David loves Discord. It's got its moments. 
Um, you, I've got some, um, I need to catch up on some super chats and some other um, things here. I hear, I fit the description. MLS, when will you be visiting the Apple River to give us the scoop on what the place is like? That was from oh. a while ago. We were talking about Michigan. I think I'm assuming that's Michigan. No, thing. Apple River. No, Apple River. Michigan. Michigan. Yeah, Apple River's that Wisconsin case that Baker's covering right now, and oh, Ozzy Pod, I think, is covering. Yeah, take a look at that. That case looks interesting. It's super. It's really super interesting. I, I've been stuck. I've been glued. I so see. Like Sheriff that's Easy. the thing. I gotta stay away from it because I'll stream about it, and I will stream the entire thing because it's super interesting. Yeah, and Sheriff Easy is the defense counsel, isn't he? Yep. Yes, he's really. And he's he's doing amazing really as as he was then. His crosses are freaking awesome. He's brilliant. He's short to the point. He's I, I can't I can't get enough of him. So when are you gonna visit, David? You're gonna go find uh, that this, bottom river. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm supposed to do something with Solomon and 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 Nick Staroff is coming to town. And so it might not be this summer because when <laughs> Nick comes in August, I think Solomon is also coming and we're gonna go sailing and stuff. Uh, oh, so no one invited me to Elise Charlene Fine Art. Thank you for the dollar ninety nine super chat. Did Hoke win, Rob? Yeah, no, I don't know. He was the stroke. It was uh, stroke. What was it? What it was the stroke hero? Stroke hero award. Oh, oh, okay. Hmm. I thought you were having a stroke for a second there. You no, just sort of trailed no. off. Um. Lindsay wants me to ask Rob how he speaks Spanish. Understand. Don't speak. Nice. Me too. You used to speak. Don't speak very well. Uh, the woman that raised me. So when my mom went back to work, my mom, I don't know. So I, I talked about her quite a bit. So my parents were both, they both worked for Bechtel. For what? They worked for Bechtel their entire careers. And my mom was the first mm -hmm. female to make partner at Bechtel with an undergrad only. Oh, that's awesome. So, and partner at Bechtel. Bechtel is one of the, one of the, if not the largest privately owned engineering company in the world. Yeah. yeah. So she was a badass woman in a group of men Yay. from a, in a very Did traditional male. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's actually really else. rare, right? So your, nan so your nanny was a Spanish speaker. She, she, I call her my niñera. She's basically, I have mom, um, a mom, one mom, a mom, one. I don't have a nanny i've got two moms my I dad is a badass too so love it um no i got i got my ass with, with the chancleta several times <laughs> um, got the jungle out of the head <laughs> oh the, the accuracy i know all too well from personal experience the jokes are not people we 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 joke about it like how these latin women have good aim with that thing it's not a joke it's the fastest thing i've ever seen in my life that's awesome. It's not, no, it's, it's precision. Precision. Mm -hmm. Stereotypes exist for a reason, y'all. We have, reason, have too many kids and we got to like get them all at the same time sometimes. Um, this is from earlier, food, FD Food Fair. You said, Wendy, tell David Law Talk with Mike is from Michigan, though. He's from Michigan? Yeah. Oh, and I'm sorry I'm behind everybody. Please forgive me. Um, and then TNN says, I don't think MLS knows that. No, I didn't know he was from Michigan. I know he's in Chicago now. He and I went to the same law school, Old Line Red says, in Chicago. Really? Yeah. Hi, Old Line. Haven't seen you for a while. How you doing? How you doing? Julie O for a $4.99 super chat catching up. And why isn't Bidet on the list of options? If you get dog poo on your hand, do you just wipe with a tissue and call it clean? No, just saying. And Julio, you are behind because guess who guess who mentioned the bidet? This B I T C H. Yeah. yeah. yeah I'm not opposed to it. Just... I, don't I know I'd have to bidet. install one. I don't Everybody, know. Everybody, you don't it. have to install one. You can buy them on Amazon for 15 bucks. You just go on your toilet and you just hook up the water. It's so easy. That's I feel like that installing that one. Original surprise would be <laughs> uh, just. I think that'd be yeah, the only way I'd, I'd willingly hook up a bidet is if I did it without telling Mrs. Wahala first. He's <laughs> <laughs> so mean. Set the phone outside to audio. Exactly. <laughs> I had I had an electrician come and put an, an outlet in my in my water closet so that I can get the 
the warm the warm one. What, are you in Europe? It's a no. water closet. Well, that's what they call it when you have like a like yeah when it's just the bathroom part of the bathroom like it's just yeah it's a water closet. It's a water yeah. closet. Um, Betsy says la la chancleta voladora never fails. No, yes, never. Yes, reina never does. No clue. Ever never fails. So it's like a like a flip flop, like a sandal, like it's, it's a flip flop, and it, it it comes off the foot. It comes off the foot in a single oh, sweeping motion, and the you range on this thing, the range on that thing is anywhere from <laughs> five feet to a hundred yards, and it is accurate. <laughs> to Depending on the level of two, anger, it is, and it's accurate to within about a two inch radius, right in the back of the head. Um, <laughs> That's awesome. Antique. Thank you. I just was raised by like I so a really hygienic family like yeah yeah. I don't see what's so wrong with the wipes. Nothing. I think, I think they're brilliant. If Nothing's wrong with the wipes. Wrong with it. I just, I just no, feel like I it's a them. lot of that's a lot of wiping. Just don't wipes. put them in your toilet and you'll be fine. I also don't feel like there's I I don't know like the bear I don't know if there's a, that's enough of a barrier for me. Oh, the, the manly ones, the ones he's talking about? Are well, Hala, I'm yeah. done with mine. What, what, what's taking yeah. you so long? Yeah. Cheater, cheater, no, easiest Lego kidding. build ever. Right. I there. started an <laughs> hour after you, sir. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome, David. I, like I got a little Princess Leia, and I've My got a girl. little Luke Skywalker, and then I got an R2, and I don't know who this guy is, but I got this guy. Anyone know who he is? I don't know who he is. No. Some rando. That looks great, David. Chris Mullen says, "Good job, David." Some silly Kathy Kennedy character. I don't know. <laughs> Some new stupid. thing. Is it on the box? Although it had oh. R2D2, so it can't be too old. It didn't have BB-8 in it. General Dunada. That's your there you oh, go. I don't know who that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Dunada. Yeah. Do nothing. Remember when um you and um. David, when you and Flux did the Star Wars stream, and she had her Princess Leia buns. I know. I was dressed as uh, as a Jedi were, Knight. Yeah, it's awesome. Lord. We're gonna do. We're gonna do. We've got to do more of those. I also have a stream with Kaiser Pineapple, where we're we're talking. Oh. We're doing a movie review of each one of the Star Wars, and we started with the first one, and then it's like one of those where you get like overextended. We've never come back to it, and it's been six months. Maybe we'll finish that whole series at some point. Um, well, that's like the beauty to. of it. You can just kind of put it on on hold, and you get to it when you get to it. I guess it hmm. might be just my age of when it came out, but I think the Phantom Menace gets doesn't get enough. David <laughs> probably agrees with you on that. All Star Wars is good. Star Wars. That's oh, what stop it! You're being ridiculous. All Star Star Wars is good. Star Wars. That's my position that I take. That apparently nobody else shares. It's a lofty take, is what it is. Yeah. Right, cranky granny. I'm with you, girl. Love the Phantom Net Menace, Dra Lady Draconis says. I don't remember which one that was. That was, that was with uh, Qui Gon Jinn. Cool. Yeah. Um, I saw Simu. What's his name? He's in the Six Rings of the uh, totally changing sub changing uh, what you would call it movies here. The Six Rings. The, Lord the, of the Avenger rings? people, Marvel, the Marvel movies. Yeah, that the six oh, rings. Oh, five rings, isn't it? Five yeah. rings. Yeah, no, know. I think I it's six. Think. The stones, the infinity stones. No, no, no. Oh, the it's a separate about? movie. There's rings now. Oh, yeah, they have rings Simu, now. like Simu something. He was also in Barbie, he was in um, the Korean. Thing? No, he he was one of the Barbie, he was one of the Kens in, in the Barbie movie. Well, that was everybody. There were so many Kens. There was. Well, he's the only Korean dude. Um, super. Anyway. Oh, I, saw him I know who you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. He was at Disneyland. He was. I saw him on the Matterhorn. See, excited utterances anyway. in chat saying, "Hey, you want to join my stream tomorrow?" Excited? No, not Shang Li, <laughs> not Ten Rings. Um, six rings. It was a. Maybe it's called Ten Rings, but no. Yeah, it's like Ten Rings. It's not Six Rings or whatever you said. Well, then maybe I'm thinking of a different movie. Uh, it's she, it's a uh, Marvel Shang Chi. Shang Chi. Shang-Chi, it's uh, Ten Rings. Okay, then it's yeah. not that one. I'm I'm saying the wrong thing. And that's Marvel anyways, which... Oh, it is owned by Disney now. I can hang this thing. Look at that. You sure can. Oh, that would be so cool to hang. I love that idea. 
The way I had that one to display it is I put like something underneath it so it sat down so that the because otherwise the wings don't stay up. Oh. So if you if you put like a base underneath the middle of oh, that, yeah. then they stay up. Maybe you can put the Lego pieces that are missing once you find them. I'm gonna hang it on the wall though, because I have a X Wing and the Millennium Falcon hanging on the wall in my Star Wars room. And so I'll do this sort of like hanging also in attack mode. So I'm gonna have to. Oh my gosh, you guys, Kelly, Kelly. Oh my gosh, I can't. Cooper Schmidt. Schmidt. Would any of you like a Statue of Liberty Lego set that I tore up because it's too hard for me? Yes, Still please. Well. Actually, yeah. I have a fix for that too. So the Did face, the face. Your... Uh, Sorry. Huh? No, I was gonna say the face on the original statue is just like one plate, um, but with the original pieces, uh, there's a fix to make it actually a face. And so I've been looking at that one to do that. Thanks, Kristen. Simu Lu. I was right. Um, David's PO box, I think, is on is on the YouTube link somewhere, isn't it? Like that's just my it? office address. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to find me Google Monday it. through Friday, nine to five. Nine to nine. <laughs> we'll say we'll say eight thirty to like one thirty ish. That's kind of what I'm logic. in the office. Yeah, I really send it to good logic. It took him six hours. By the way, um that Poor took Joe. That took Joe six hours to build that one. So don't. No, he didn't do the Statue of Liberty. He did the New York City skyline. Oh, he did. You're right. Yeah, skyline. Yeah, that's that an undertaking. Ooh. No, no. It was less pieces than this. It was just. It was less pieces. It was just. That's not true. Joe was struggling. Rob. Nobody Joe better talk about Joe. Huh? Um, <laughs> please. I said Joe's going to be in the chat. Rob, did you make your counter? <laughs> Elephant. And Kathy Trout want to want us to see your want to see your counter. Want you, you want to see the counter? Please. Counter. Sorry if I missed that earlier, you guys. Uh, where's this go? Did David build a fancy building? Yeah. <laughs> Basically, yeah. Uh, what did I do? Built, built a, a fancy building. Well, with wings. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say fancy. for her pleasure. I would say uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> Wings for her pleasure. Oh no! Oh, yeah, no. it's shared. All right. Nice. Oops, so the sorry. counter. Sorry, sorry. The counter has Very, more significance. Oh wow! So That's beautiful. This counter. So when I was redesigning the kitchen, I redid the kitchen. My dad died uh, June of 2019, June 7, 2019, after cancer. There's dad. Oh, hi, um, so what I did was I kind of created a task that I thought was going to be impossible. I wanted to embed fiber optics into an epoxy table and I wanted it to be the sky above oh, that's cool. Washington state where he died. I wanted it to be an accurate depiction of that date, of that date. So I went oh. and drilled out of the live edge for the fiber optics. I laid out the star map and then I did a sacrificial board and threw a drilled all the holes for in line with where the stars were. Um, then I put his initials in there mm. and his, his plane. That he loved oh, that's life. so cool. And there it is. So, wow. It lights up. What uh, is that counter staying with the house? That's the question. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's staying with the house. Oh, that's gorgeous. Wow. I, like leaving, I like leaving stuff behind. Oh, I love beautiful. that concept. Oh, I sweet. love that. I love the story. I love it all. I, uh, I have some you, old, old Spalding maple that I had, uh, my grandfather had used as a dock, and I made it into a countertop for the bathroom upstairs that the kids use. Oh. But damn it, that thing's coming with me. I made it. So that, I'll, I'll install cheap. Home Depot cabinetry when I sell the house. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking actually, that one with me. There's a video oh, of me building it on my other channel. Um, yeah, all the way through the, the, the wood. I don't know how long the video is. It's like maybe 20 minutes or so. There's a video of it on my other channel. Oh, cool. Somebody asked for us, for David to show his table that he made, but David's not. David's not inside the main house right now. I'm not inside the main house. I am in the shop. He's been evicted, y'all. I have. 
Ronnie, you are not older than me, but she says, I'm older than all of you. My favorite are Star Wars, The Empire Strikes Back, and Return of the Jedi. Yes, girl. I got to say, and you guys can hate me if you want to, the Ewoks was my favorite. Ewoks Rogue awesome. One is the best Star Wars. Rogue One. Have you watched Rogue One, Rob? Yeah. I've watched all of them, almost. What do you mean, almost? Uh, I don't. I haven't watched like the Netflix thing, or not the Netflix, like the um. You the need to watch. Like I watched watch, Solo. What about Andor? Watch, watch Andor. You'll like That's Andor. I, mean. I haven't watched the shows yet. Like I haven't watched. Yeah, them. I mean, uh, the Mandalorian is is good for the first couple of seasons. Boba Fett is stupid. Um, I didn't care for Ahsoka, but um, Andor is really good. I like the Andor. If you like Rogue One, you'll like Andor. Oh, let's see what. Let's see. Nice. Nice. Oh my god! I want that. Like, I want to own it. (laughs) I'm gonna make that one with the grandkids. That's really cute. It's a lot of little pieces. Yeah, maybe not. They're too little. They'll eat them. Now I got to do the balloons. How many pieces is that? Well, when you had the box, it used to tell you. Exactly. <laughs> Five ninety-eight. Okay. They're little. Though. That's a good size set. You got another hour and a half. Nah. Joe was horribly <laughs> sick for that stream. <coughs> he was so sick. Yeah, and thank you, Adrian, for the five dollars super chat. I felt so bad and thought he might die from that flu before finishing the build. He would have quit though. He, he was, a, was trooper. a trooper. He was a trooper. We, our guests have all been r- really good sports. Mm-hmm. Megan Fox almost quit last week. She tried she to. Do. You I, had to I had to cheerlead for her. She was trying to give I, up. Oh, you say cheerlead. I say bully. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I, I was she, an actual cheerleader. I don't she got that. what she needed. <laughs> Rob, did you watch it? Like, don't be I losing, didn't. So, well, I, I haven't watched a lot of these. So Mischief, Mischief is sick right now. She's got uh, like a, basically like a flu. So she is upstairs in bed. So she was asking me, how long do you think you'll go tonight? I said, honestly, I don't know. Let me look how, how long these other ones have yeah. gone. <laughs> Pulled it up and I was like, holy shit, this is like <laughs> FNF. Like, what the <laughs> heck? Except we all stay sober for the most part. Except Wendy sometimes. Wendy gets wasted. Don't let her lie to you. She's Why over there wasted? sipping off the flask. <laughs> Speaking of, I got to go get another yeah. beer. Yeah, go get a beer. So Expert invited me on a stream one time and I... Was I it his the 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 thumbnail was something about a drinking stream. So I came prepared, like I had a bottle of wine because <laughs> I thought he was inviting me to drink on stream and I didn't want to be rude. Well, he doesn't drink. Nope. Was it a drinking stream? So I'm like lit up there by myself looking like a moron. Where was I for that? I don't know. You weren't what'd you do? I went on expert stream and it said it was a drinking stream or something. Or and so I Bought a brought a bottle of wine and like an idiot I drank it, and I was oh, lit up there. I and he that. doesn't Why drink. Yeah, yeah, I forgot what that was. About. I forgot. I think he just didn't have enough people to fill his his F and L that night, and he called me like, "Hey, you want to come up?" I'm like, "Okay." Oh, thanks, Aaron. I don't think so, I did. I was. I felt like I was tipsy. And I'm so like, you like a weekend review, Rob? Is that what you do on Fridays? Kind of a weekend review. Yeah, I kind of take stuff. like I kind of take pick I take stories I like the ones I've covered. So Sam Bankman Fried was a case I covered from the bankruptcy case on. So that was like a little pet case I loved. So I take cases I cover. Oh no. What's um, your opinion on that? Do you think he got railroaded? Or do you think it's no, no, it was he he got he got a slap on the wrist. It was a, a weak ass sentence for what he actually did. But I mean, so you think he's actually guilty? Oh, he's more than guilty. No, I, okay. I, like I said, I covered the bankruptcy from like I covered everything. He's a complete piece of <laughs> gaslit everyone at every stage of the way. Um, his argument that the investors got made whole. No, it's a weak ass argument. That means that that's saying in the bankruptcy, eventually, based on current valuation, there's enough possibly to pay things, pay the debtors, uh, the creditors back. Those are the creditors that have filed claims, not all creditors, creditors who have filed claims, which a lot. And he also left out the fact that three people unalive themselves in the aftermath. Um, so when you're sitting there saying, 
no harm was actually done in your sentencing, you might want to, you know. Now he, he you, that wasn't real. That wasn't him being railroaded. That was that was a weak ass sentence. What do you? Uh, what did he get? Twenty five. Okay. This is federal, so he'll serve all of it. No, he can. He 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 might be out in fifteen. Oh, okay. But the twenty five get- uh, guidelines were fifty. We have future Mrs. 2.0 in the chat. We do. Yeah, she was here a little while ago. No. Oh, Saw no. people talking to her. He's guilty of gaslighting. Hmm. Well, I don't know. It's like, oh. okay, what was that woman that had the, um, you know, you pick your, uh, uh, prick your finger and then you can do the test for Elizabeth all Holmes. these diseases? Yes. Okay. So that she case. 11. She got 11 years? I don't see. I there's a fine line between puffering and and like fraudulent misleading the shareholders, right? Oh, and dude, the, the evidence was there. Yeah. I don't. But I'm see, not familiar she was confident. She was confident enough in her technology that it could work, and in fact, it did work so much so that three other companies, at the time she was going to trial, were doing exactly what she said that her product could do. So it's capable of doing it. And a lot of these startups, people, you fund the money and you know it's a risk. I don't know. I couldn't get behind that one. I thought she was that, a that was also That was also very different than Sam Bankman-Fried. Yes. Like Sam Bankman-Fried was really very different than that case. He was just scamming the shit out of people, wasn't he? He was... Was he, it a he, like Ponzi scheme or something? Or no, he created he. Wait, I gotta get this little chicken up here. How do I do that? Lady Los Sanders said, oh. "Leave for DC in a week. Love for my class to meet Rob." Oh yeah, Lady Los Sanders is a law student, right, David? Yes, and she's oh. interviewing. I don't know if I can say it. We'll say she's interviewing some legal people in DC. I don't know if she wants to say, but it's I'd very be happy, cool. Lady Los Angeles. Shoot me a uh, an email to the law that? number at gmail law number at gmail dot com. Lady Los Angeles, I hope you heard that. That's awesome. That's very generous of you. Thank you, Rob. She's been taking some of my streams where I'm talking about various legal things, like um, whatever rules of evidence or hearsay or something, and using it in her class. And apparently to the point where she actually got uh, like the highest mark in the class. So I'm going to say, all right, then I know what I'm talking about. So that's good. It's like, it's like verification. Well, yeah. at least, at least the law professor thinks you do. Yeah. Right. David has, well, has a, has a law. I don't trust law professors when it comes to trial. Mm. No, never. David they haven't a- tried a case ever, you know, what's, what's the channel They're- on discord called David, your law t- teaching channel. What's it called? Oh, it's just like law lessons or something. Yeah, law like lessons. That. David gives us law lessons. Yeah, I was asking. Law um, Elise Charlene Fine Art for dollar ninety nine super chat. Thank you, love. The Hollow. I day. I am in East Tennessee, y'all. I'm originally. Yeah, from did Illinois. you know that we have fifty one states? There's an East Tennessee. There might as well be. It might as well be its own state. I tell you that much. And I like it that way. Okay. All I know is Dolly Parton is from Tennessee and she's a national treasure and she's she everything. Is. So wherever she's from, I'm going to go, go at least see. Everybody loves you said Dolly Dollywood. Right you want to go to Dollywood? We're doing yeah, a meetup. Yeah. We're doing a May meetup. In May. Mischief took the kids there for spring break last year. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it was the favorite part of the entire trip. <gasps> Yay. It's an awesome place. Oh, good. I'm excited. Because um, now yeah, I'm not but- afraid of rides. So I'm going to go on some rides. See, I'm I glad I didn't say anything, Lady Law. Oh, she didn't want, want you to? Yeah. So I'm like, I don't know if I can. <laughs> but, um, you know, to yeah, so, Baker, there's three Tennessee. There is. There's East, Middle, and, and West Tennessee. Okay. Rob, have you been to uh, any of the Tennessees? Hi, Ben. Uh, I've been to Nashville. That's the only Tennessee I've been to. Okay. Like Does that Nashville count? is the fourth. It counts. Tennessee. It's in Middle Tennessee, but it counts. It's not quite as good, but it's better than West Tennessee. You need to go to Dollywood, Rob. You should. Well, you should come to Dollywood. With us. Come with us. We're doing so on the May sixteenth. We're going to do the day at the park, right? We're all going to just meet up and kind of hang out at the park and and do our thing. 
That is a Thursday. And then Friday, we're going to do a live um, FNL, Friday Night Live, the expert. I have on. actually promised. I think I've, I've got a commitment for CrimeCon. Mm. So I'm already kind of tied up for the month of May because my well, trial schedule also sucks for May. May is I've got a three day followed by a one. I've got a three day trial going Monday, when, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, then a one day on Friday. And then the next week I have a two day followed by another one day. Yikes. Yeah. May is going to hurt. Fun. I love trials. I do, but it hurts. Like that. Hoits, it hoits. It's a lot. There's not a whole, there's a whole lot of like not sleeping that happens. I can imagine. Well, that's true. Yeah. You don't, um, I imagine you probably don't eat very good that that you don't time you, period you, either. I don't I don't eat. You, you, you people body wanted me to like live stream between my trials, and I'm like, no, I don't talk to anybody. I don't eat. I I, I focus on the case. I don't sleep. When you're in the middle of you trial, lose. All I, you lose. I will lose five to ten pounds in a trial. Wait, really? I need to get a oh, yeah. lawyer then. <laughs> it's, it's not good it's not good weight loss it's, it's like stress right. not eating. You know, lawyer suits lawyer suits only la like last half the length of what a suit should last because stress sweat is a real thing there's a lunchbox joke in there that i'm just going to leave alone <laughs> um, i'm just well, glad I that see. all these things that i'm experiencing are now being done so that's yeah great. Like my clients want to sit with me at lunch during trials. I'm like, I don't no. want to sit with you. I'm going to focus no. on your case. You go sit I, over there. I'm not talking to anybody. I need documents in front of me. I need mm -hmm. to review everything. And yeah. Here, give me one second. I need to get a refill my drink. I don't think I'd ever want to be a defendant or a plaintiff in any case. Ooh, no, it's not fun. Being a defendant is not fun. <laughs> I, I, it's good I, being the lawyer on other I side. I would most likely be right. a defendant if I were ever in a court. I, I got um I got called for jury duty. <laughs> Did you? Yeah. I'm so excited. Going? Hell yeah. Are you kidding me? It is my it is my duty. Oh, ooh, Valhalla. Nice. It's my obligation. It's my duty. It's my civil like right. It's all those things. Someone That's asked good. in chat, I forget who it was, that said, how come you always oh. take apart and then rebuild the Vader mask? And yeah, somebody asked that. I don't always take... <laughs> <laughs> I don't take apart and rebuild the same thing. Um, I do, if I've never built it on stream, and I've built it, you know, for funsies, uh, Lego is expensive, y'all, and I'm a broke goat farmer, so I will occasionally recycle some sets that i've already yeah. built if they're if and they he will accept gifts and he will accept lego sets i need to get a p.o box is what i need you do I because you cannot Rob's have email. mail sent to you by rant you know um lady losandra will ask rob what his email address is again and we'll write it down and put it in chat for you i think I he said it was it long number at, at gmail or something didn't he? Yeah. or maybe i'm making that up I bet one of his. Um, I bet one of his subscribers in chat knows what it is by heart. I'm not a robot. It is. It's it's law of and number, post. all spelled out. Yep, law and number gmail.com. Yeah. See, I had it right. You did, Bahala. You're so smart. You must be a goat farmer, yo. Something, something. I love your short you posted today. The duck. Yeah. Yeah, he's pretty, ain't he? Yeah. yeah I, I thought you were gonna be funny and say something. About white, I saw something about all white something, and I'm like, oh, that's insane. <laughs> I was surprised that that uh, didn't get flagged. If I'm being completely honest, right? All white male duck. That was all yeah. the title was the video. Like, I'm gonna get arrested. <laughs> you think Rob and Molly's attorney went to the same school? Who says that? Pam Who? says that. What, David? You want to pull that up? Oh, Maya. I'm sorry, Maya. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Maya Kowalski. So, Greg oh, Anderson, cool. Greg Anderson, and I went to the same law school. And we what liked to kind of Nova Southeastern University. No name school. Tier four. We like to joke about it, kind of like the little guys now. He, people were critical of his style. I was too. I, and people hate when I talk about some of the critiques. I talk about it with Greg to his face. We joke about it. Um, but yeah, little guys, the chips on their shoulders. 
I, uh, you know, there's a style for every case. There's, you know, one style doesn't fit all cases necessarily. Uh, and two, four schools or whatever. My school, the ABA has been trying to discredit, like, do away with its accreditation from my school that I went to because it's a was private it cool? school. Is it, is it Cooley? Yep. That's my school. Hmm. And it's a great school. The idea behind it being we're going to lower our standards to admit. But once you get in, you're not guaranteed to graduate like U of M or something. You actually have to put in the work and you can fail out. And there is a whole bunch of people that failed out. Yep. And, uh, and so I like that idea. And they also offered weekends. So I would work all week long and I would take classes eight hours a day on Saturday and Sunday. And uh, that's how I went to law school. So that's I, I like that ability to do it. But it gets a bad name and it still has a bad name. It's been sued. You know, there was a New York lawsuit and all kinds of stuff. But uh, I, I and it teaches you how to be a real lawyer. It's not like we're going to teach you theory and then you go get your first job and your partners teach you the you know how to practice. They actually from the from the go you could practice law. So that was nice. I worked hard for that paper. So you're saying Aaron, I worked I definitely worked hard for that paper. How are the balloons made? What are the balloons made up of? I'm excited they, about balloons. Yeah, I can't switch, even tell you. I'll switch over to this view. Pocket knife. Oh my oh, god. Cool. Oh, it's a one piece. Oh my god, I love this. Oh, it's not one. Just sticking balloons together. It's like making a birthday cake at this point. Oh my god, I have to have I gotta There's a whole new sets that are coming out this year that look really fun. There's like these big insect sets. Um, I just saw a new medieval like town hall set. I saw that one. I also saw the family tree. Oh, in a tree house. Uh, actual a actual tree, tree house. house. There's a tree house one. I'm standing. How do you Rob, make if you don't know, like... my normal studio is in a tree house. I'm going to play with some layouts for a second. I, I want to do like where he's, we're looking at him, but we're on the side. You know what I mean? What? Try it. Yeah, no? hang on, hang on. Oh, oh yeah. Hang on. Thanks, David. Go. Yeah. See, I know what we're doing. And then let's well, remove. Yeah. Let's remove the uh, there. So the Lego head. Your face. Your your copyright infringement. <laughs> yes, definitely. These streams haven't They're been demonetized. We're still good. They're not. We've never had one of these demonetized. Mm -mm. Oh yeah. Oh, but they are monetized. You just never had a demon. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. Get a I need box to. Bahala. I need to, Aaron. What's that? I need a PO box. Hi, Wolf. You do. What is the I mean, I think oh, they're turtles. Wolf wants to see your turtles. I got um, it's a hundred and twenty-five gallon aquarium. There's two turtles in it. Little aquatic turtles. They're cool. Oh, that's a great idea, Ali. Did that? you see what Ali said? She says, "Get a PO box and make it Amazon." Amazon wish Lego wish list. I love that. We we David had an Amazon wish list, and and we. We tried really hard to get that going. That was great. Thanks, David. I still have my camera and my stuff. It's very cool. That's awesome. I see expert in the chat. I don't know if I need to bring my stuff down for his Friday stream down to. Um, what stuff? Like my cameras and my mobile oh. stream pad and things like that. Or what we're doing. I'm not sure, actually. I'm sure that he's got it the equipment no julie it's not no it looks it's not julia. What's that? my birthday somebody chat somebody a while back uh a personal real life friend for like four streams in a row when i was doing like <laughs> a trial he would just pop in and in all caps happy birthday valhalla so now it's a thing and every every day somebody wishes me happy birthday sometimes there'll be several dozen it's, it's a lot happen. sometimes. It's a lot sometimes. I think it's you do it in something like Ricada's stream. <laughs> <laughs> Rob, how many times have you been on with Ricada? Quite a bit. Yeah. <laughs> he loves sandbagging me. <laughs> yeah. I was on with him he, last night. His favorite thing. Like catch you off guard. Oh yeah. 
Oh yeah. Happy. We read uh, we read Unbreaded last night. I got to wear a priest costume. It was fun. Wait, what? <laughs> Should have stayed up till four a.m. like I did, Wendy. You would have you would have known. I, I was recovering you didn't, from you didn't Disneyland. Miss much. Man. No, it was. <laughs> I showed up pretty liquored up already. It was a good time. Nice. This looks as tedious as some of the flower sets we do. Is it? Are, do you just have the umbrella or the uh, the balloons left? Or are you still have more? I think so. Is are the roses going to be this hard? Yeah, roses are way more. Oh, they're tedious. Why did you guys tell me to get that one then? I don't know what I'm doing. You got <laughs> it and said, "Look what I got." No, I asked you which one should I get for Mother's Day, and you said the roses, so I got it. I'm getting a different one. You know what? I'm going back to Disneyland to buy a different Lego set now. Thanks. You don't have to go, go to Disneyland different. to get a Lego set. Right? right? Go to Walmart, just, go to Target, or Lego.com. No, I, got, I, got I got it on Amazon. I'm just kidding. But they were selling oh, Lego at Disneyland, and I really wanted to get one from there just because it was cool. Oh, I saw the picture you posted with the Lego Kia or vending yeah. machine. Lego yeah, yeah. vending machine. Isn't that cool? That was at the airport. Yeah, I saw one Wall at uh, Orlando Airport. There it is. That's funny. Let's Ellie see, asked um, if I had lost subs last night on Rakita. She said last night was funny. Valhalla, did you did people on subs? No, last night was actually one of the first times that I've gone on Rakita's show and gained subs. I think I don't think it's ever happened before. <laughs> have any of you built the succulent Lego set? Yeah. I've seen it. No. I haven't built it. Yeah, you wanted built it. built it on set. Not I the mean, succulent. On... Not the succulent. No, that's not the succulent. I built the um Oh, you uh, did the origami. You've the, done the the orchids. The orchids, orchid. Yeah. yeah. The succulent Lego set was one like the one plant one that I was like, eh. Yeah, I was like, I, eh. I could do it. It's like one. twenty pieces. Kelly says the roses aren't hard. Oh, well, Kelly's not you, Wendy. <laughs> True that. <laughs> Kelly Kelly doesn't have half a brain. She has a whole brain. Ooh. Uh, Rob needs to tell the Wada Dada stack story. Wood Daddy stack. Wood, oh, Daddy. Wood Daddy stack. Do you not know this story? I don't know. I think I do. Oh, God. So I was live streaming. I, I don't know. remember if it was a uh, Friday Night Friends or not, but I was live streaming. Said. And Emily joins after she had done something, a Friday stream with her, with her husband. And she came in and we were saying, Emily, what, what did you cover? Well, we covered, and I think earlier that day, I know what it was. I was covering the Tale of the Wrens reporting about how Amber Heard is still, um, God, Amber Heard and Johnny Depp were still trending on Twitter. And I was talking about how that's not really a significant thing because Twitter, Twitter trending is just, it's not what people think it is. It, it doesn't mean like the topic is that popular. It doesn't really mean anything other than people are report or people are talking about it right now in that moment. So I was on with Rick and with e Rick, Ian, and then Emily joined. We we're talking about the topic of that and asked Emily what she was covering and kind of filled her in on the Twitter thing. And Emily said that she had been talking about a real housewives case where one of these housewives had uh, been reporting or had said like that she got her husband a picture of her and other ladies with oh, their body parts out and exposed stacked on top of each other. Yeah, this Outstanding. Was the, the, that was the gift. Best wife ever. Gift Better than Abu Dhabi. The the stack. And I was going, you got to be kidding me. And I said, did you just, I said, it, he, 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 I asked, it was literally a stack of vaginas. Like it was, a, the gift was a stack of vaginas. Mm. Oh, I do crazy. remember this picture or hearing about it anyways. I don't know if I've seen it. Baker to cover it. So Baker, we like then, that. Talk about the the trending topics. How like Twitter trending can is not really real, right? Uh, and Emily goes, for example, I bet we could get a certain phrase of our own. 
For example, Wood Daddy Stacks. We could probably get Wood Daddy Stacks trending on Twitter. <laughs> and the chat started laughing their ass off. The chat was like, Bet. got it, no problem. Number one U.S. trending on Twitter. Nice. Wood Daddy Stacks. Outstanding. So I was Wood Daddy Stacks. Trending number one on Twitter. Love it. For a short period of time. <laughs> now, how do you but get ones trending on Twitter? Was it just you have to have a bunch of people tweeting out like hashtag something? Yeah, it's it's basically a whole lot of just grassroots, like because uh, Twitter focuses on the frequency and the location. So if it's if it's being retweet and you can't retweet, it has to be kind of original tweets. Oh. If it's originally tweeted several times, Twitter starts to pick it up as being something that might be popular. Uh, yeah. No. So I don't know that, Twitter it, enough. It picked it up as a popular topic. It's probably got something to do with like the the amount of tweets. It's how much, how fast. Like, yeah, right? it's how much, how fast. It's various things, like how much, how fast, what's being said. I know at one point we had a thing. We were all going to tweet out pre Zachariah Anderson. Yeah, we did it. Did it, mm -hmm. did it. did it become trending or whatever? I never heard the outcome of that. I never I heard remember. the outcome. But like we, we like, I think part of the thing, Rob, if you're, you might know more that it, it helps if everyone does it at the same time. Is that true? Yeah. It's, it's everyone yeah. doing it at the same time. Yeah. Um, Crystal DeSaro says, Rob, it went past the keyboard. I think maybe one of your Lego pieces might have. Oh, the balloon went off the edge here. Oh, okay. All right. I'll go get it in a minute. The well, everyone says, your you audience so is watching you so closely. Yeah, they're so cute. Ian was leather daddy stacks. Yeah, Ian was leather, <laughs> Ian was leather daddy. <laughs> I was wood daddy. Um, Rick Rick Hogue was gamer daddy. It was it it, it was so. It, there's someone did like a 15 minute summary of all of it. <laughs> I was. Uh, it's worth the watch. It's really fucking funny. Everyone's saying it's Emily's favorite stream that she's ever done. It really it that, is. Rob got yeah. Emily to say stack of vaginas five times. Mm -hmm. One day we'll have Emily on. One day we'll be big enough. Well, we have to. That'll be the only, only time my is. wife watches my stream is when <laughs> Emily D. She only, my wife only watches Emily D. Baker. She doesn't watch me. She doesn't watch anybody else. She, you know, what was the trial that I was talking about? I was like, oh, did you watch this? She's like, oh, yeah, Emily covered it. So I watched it. <laughs> You, after you spent like a week covering the exact same trial. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, I know about that case. Emily's covering it. Yeah. Oh, it's so funny. So so Emily and I like we have I've got a, a group chat. Like we're like we're actual friends. Like we talk quite a bit. She seems yeah. like an awesome chick. I'm not she really is. It I don't mean really to she sound has purple hair, so she's cool. Right. She seems very cool. Oh, no, I'm not saying it that way. What I'm saying is like we so we we talk outside of the yeah, regular in streams sure. in real life and we're friends and we we talk about the cases that we end up covering quite a bit because you do like you, you kind of go, did you guys see this? Oh, my God. What's your thought? So there's a back and forth that we have beforehand. Well, I start talking about what case was I talking about yesterday. The. God, what was it? the Koberger hearing. Oh, yeah. And Emily's opinion was that the defense attorney was was in the wrong. My opinion was very different. Like, very different. My opinion was that the judge was wrong and the, and the, the prosecutor's wrong. People were in my comments like, you know, I can't believe this. Emily said this, yada, yada. Like, well, yeah, we're going to have a difference of opinion. You guys act like we don't talk about this stuff beforehand. And you act like we don't know that there's going to be, you put, what's the saying? You put uh, four lawyers in a room, you end up with six opinions. Right. Yeah. That is one thing that I think the law tube has, has benefited the world a little bit, right? It's, it's gotten 
several people on stream together and discussed ideas and had opposing views and they're still friends and still support each other. And I think the world needs more of that. It's Was cool this thing. an Emily's stream, Julia? Oh, we need Was it, it an love Emily's stream? Love. That they were, they were, mentioning that my wife only that's like my that was like my, my line I, I i we were on a, a panel together i can't remember when it was and um i said you know my wife only watches you she doesn't watch anyone else she doesn't even watch my stuff um and uh i've been trying to get her on uh this uh or uh well this really I, i'd love to interview her so rob's our connection now nice, nice. she is she is so busy it's that's the one challenge that is the one challenge speaking of uh doing too much yeah oh it was rob's stream last night Ooh, what was hold on. somebody's asking me something the Maybe. emily d baker was in the chat oh yeah. and they were saying that um apparently your chat was telling her that uh, my wife only watches her streams she pops in all the time she's she's so funny and people are like get on stream it's like dude she's like yeah I just pop into through. chat all the time. I like floating through and just saying hi to people and just saying, hey, chaos, here, here it is. And like, get on stream. I am currently walking around the house in clothes. I'm not getting on stream. No, mm -hmm. right. Yeah. I haven't worn a shirt in four hours. I'm not about to pull one out yeah. now. Well, for women, it's something else. But yes, <laughs> the thing that goes under our shirt that we can't wait to take off. Uh -huh. I don't want to put it back on. Bomb a girl. Rob, what is it? What Sorry, is the name David. of Hannah's phone in the Rust trial? Uh, Gorilla Grip, uh, Gorilla Grip Pussy Power, something like that. <laughs> I mean, gorilla Grip Pussy Power, was it? Uh, yeah, Vagina. No, it was Gorilla. It was was gorilla she grip sentenced yet? Was she sentenced yet? No, I think she's going to get a very light sentence. Oh, she will. Yes. You don't think she will? The, the max the max is 18 months. Oh. So I don't even think she'll get any. Well, she'll get no. time served because she's been in for, what, two, three weeks? Yeah. I, her her lawyer botched that that job on the – God, the, the judge, she gets she gets guilty. And what does every criminal defense attorney know is coming next? Yeah. Your Honor, we'd like to revoke bond. Yeah, you know that's coming. You know it's coming. Her attorney – has to like pause and pulls up the statute on his phone because he's not prepped for the argument. He literally pulled the statute up on his phone. How long were they deliberating? He could have written a written motion, you know, in the okay. time. It was, it was laughable. Only There's some wasn't. really bad attorneys out there. That's what I'm noticing. And it's not... I don't want to say it's easy to be an attorney, but it's not that hard to, you know, really just sort of focus on the law and focus on the arguments. And, you know, but most attorneys aren't still comfortable talking in front of people. Uh, that's the bottom line. You know, I always say that once you get to trial, it's just a song and dance routine. Everyone knows yeah. everything that's going to come out. You're just performing for the audience, which is the jury. And then they get the vote on. It's it's like, you know, America's best singer or whatever the hell that show is called. The boys. Um, well, I don't know. Whatever. I don't watch those shows. But um, you know, you're just you're just performing at that point, and oh so you God. should have everything prepared, or at least a, an outline of all of your arguments, all the possible things that could, that are going to come up, the arguments that you know you're going to make. Uh, most of the time, I have I know exactly the hearsay that the other side is going to attempt. Oh yeah, to you're ready for bring it. up, like, and I'm like, ready wait, for it. I have my arguments. I have everything. Hey, good logic. Hey, Joe, welcome. We are only three hours in, so Rob's got another three hours to catch up to you, sir. Hi, Joe. I'm not doing too bad. I could have knocked off that house in 14 you guys minutes. You better not tell Joe what I said. I'm so embarrassed. Don't tell Oh, yeah, right. Joe. Oh, Joe, do you want to know what Wendy said about you? So you got to go back to the beginning of the stream. She's yeah. in love with you. Just a crush, not in love. <laughs> but see the thing is so joe would tell stories here. joe would tell stories on the stream and then yeah. just stop building entirely <laughs> and just you know do his joe thing tell his story yeah that's and be that like oh yeah about, I'm, that sounds about right yeah yeah oh wait i'm still building let me get back like to my a building. three hour story like it was pretty cool yeah <laughs> well it was yeah joe right was hot irish. Hot irish. yes girl mm -hmm. he cute he cute 
<laughs> yeah, this is um no, most of our streams go about four hours. It takes it's it's building Lego and talking at the same time is is a lot more difficult than most I like people. Solomon says don't let it make you feel bad because how long did Solomon take? Oh god, how long did so we did Solomon it too? Was, I guess see this. Yeah, how long was Solomon's stream? But his was really hard, like he had a really big build. Uh oh, I did think that I feel bad at all. <laughs> I, I did I did the monohull sailboat uh in uh like half the time. Let's see. What what was Solomon's off um who do Sean Sean's was four hours and forty eight minutes, potentially criminal. And then uh wait, I'm where am I missing over it? So then we had Brandy Churchwell. She was actually fairly short, three hours. Thank you, Stray. Uh, yeah, Brandy, oh, there he is. Yeah. Uh, four hours for Solomon. And and Sean, Sean, Sean wasn't too long, but then he decided to build another one. That's right. That's right. Yeah. I forgot Sean built two. He did. He built two cars. He was such a nice guest. We have the best superstars on our on this channel in this show in this stream hello wendy so rob is it your intention to keep this uh we youtube going until this is your primary I career no i'll always be a lawyer yeah you don't <laughs> dream of that day where you can hang up your your no, uh, lawyer insane. suit i would go insane I want to get to the point where I can be extremely um, choosy with my cases. Actually, there's an attorney that I ran into um, a couple, actually, probably a couple months ago now. He um, he only does trials where uh, another law firm will handle all the pretrial work, filing the complaint, doing all the discovery. And when it's ready for trial, he just picks it up and runs with it. I would love to do that. Because I hate the pretrial work. I hate doing discovery. Not nah, hate it. It's okay. It's fun to be to try to like. Everyone some emotions are fun. Um, discovery is a pain in the ass. But I like the I like the crafty thought that you have to go into with say something like a summary motion or something like that. Uh, but the fun for me is being in the courtroom. So if everyone can do all the pretrial work for me and then just hand me the file and and say like, hey, we got a trial in four weeks. You run it. Uh, that would be amazing. That's what I want to do. And I didn't know that was a thing until a couple months ago when there's an attorney uh, in a northern county that apparently that's all he does. So I'm going to market myself like that. So if you're in Michigan and you want an attorney to take your case to trial, give me a call. Lynn, I agree. I, what's one of the reasons I really like the Lego streams is because no matter how big of the guest, it, you know, no matter if they've got a million subscribers or a thousand subscribers, it's similar people in chat. And so we all get to hang out and it's nice. I like it. Uh, question from Rachel K wants to know what you're building, Rob. Well, we can pull it up and show right now. Show it looks it, like show just it, show this is the house from up. It's so cute. I love it. It's really so cute. the balloons come off or what are those extra balloons? It's just a separate little it's a lawn. Oh, okay. It's a lawn ornament. That's very cool. I like Russell. Russell's yeah. awesome. With his backpack and his hey, frying Russell, pan. Yeah. How you doing, Russell? That's such a cool build. And then Doug. We can ask Rob Cat W. Can we ask Rob to play the Southern Febreze clip? I think that's not the first time someone asked that question. I think I might be able to. Hang on. Yeah, pull it up. Oh, um, we have a member chat from Half Irish that asks, would Rob join us for a Zachary Anderson stream or Zach fundraising stream? I can try to join people for a lot of different streams. It is a matter of it, 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 it's a matter of time. It's a matter of timing. It's a matter of what's going on. Um, like I, I used to be able to join Eric Hunley on Fridays all the time. Fridays are motion states. So not anymore. It's it's tough. I've been so busy with work. He sends me, he he always messages me Thursday. Like, can you join? I'm like, oh, I want to. It is so it is so hard. Look, Friday, Friday, and the worst is Friday in Fairfax, 11 30 a.m. is domestic motions. 
Really? Yeah. So it's like that sucks. Mine are Tuesdays and Wednesdays in my two primary counties. So that's nice. Um, but the thing is, is like I used to love Fridays. I used to love Fridays. It's the weekend is coming. It's great. Now I dread them because as soon as I wake up Friday morning, I realize all the things I needed to do this week and the things that I didn't get done. And I have one day to get them done. And uh, that's the thing that's most frustrating about Fridays now. May 10th, fundraising, Zach fundraiser on Nick's channel. Yeah, May 10th Hi, is the fundraiser. And it's also Nick's birthday. So, all right. So, stream. I have the outro. Hold oh, on. Yeah. I can we mute wanna... it. I can mute it. It's got music. The music is in Vado Elements. So, if you have Vado, I'll mute it for right now. Uh, okay. This is so we could see his lathe chat in case you missed now this him. this this pen auctioned at for ian's uh charity the pen auctioned for four thousand seven hundred what's the what's the uh what? what's the website that you use in Vado? in Vado elements i what I, was I, he I, fundraising I'm play without the audio uh okay. the salary children's hospital oh nice Okay, so it's shared. You can pull it up whenever. Okay. All right. Oh, you use color pencils. Nice. Yeah. A little resin pour. Wow. David has a cool table he made with a resin pour. I've seen people make rings out of this. <laughs> Can't even draw a stick, man. It's pretty sweet. What, um, what kind of lathe is that? What's the what's Laguna? That? Laguna, okay. I they like their stuff. Them. They are they're a younger manufacturer, but they've they've honestly come a long. They've, they've done so much so quick. Like I have the Laguna Fusion table saw. And I've got their bandsaw and their lathe. Like I love. I've them. got the fourteen inch uh, bandsaw Laguna. Yeah, I do too. That uh, that's a freaking awesome bandsaw. It's a beast. It, it I, I rip a lot of stuff through that. Oh, my gosh. The, oh, how cool. I love that. It looks like a tattoo machine. And I love seeing the lathe, too. That was cool. Thank you for whoever suggests. I can't remember who suggested that earlier. Thanks for showing us that, Rob. Yeah, the and lathe the is named. The lathe, I named my tool. So the lathe is named Poppy. And Secret McSquirrel was the was a moderator for my channel. Uh the first time, first moderator I had she moderated for Alita. And when I started a YouTube channel, she saw that I was crazy or saw that people were in the chat and she said, throw me a wrench. So I threw her a wrench and nice. um, took care of us. And then she passed and mm. her daughter who passed before her, she had to, she had the unfortunate circumstance of having to bury her child mm. who was named Poppy. So mm. uh, she always told me to get a lathe and I named the lathe Poppy. Love that. Nice. That's she was the she was a really she had she had made quite an impact in uh, the YouTube community. Secret I've heard you talk about people. her before, Valhalla. Yeah, I never had the chance to meet her because I think she got sick and then passed as I was just sort of coming into this world. So I heard a lot about her, but I never met her. Rachel K. Wendy H. is a fan of myself and Valhalla and. Uh, she, we, we brought her up here, um, well, probably like six, eight months ago to help moderate. It was like episode MC. three, I think. Yeah. Yeah. It was episode three. Now we're on 13. Yeah. So you 10 episodes ago. Yeah. Can, can you, you pull up chats and interact? Cause it's too hard for us. We're, we're, just, Lego. we're the worst streamers ever. <laughs> worst streamers ever. We need help. Yeah. Well, I was lucky enough to be one of David's, um, first OG members when he got monetized. And I joined the highest tier and he DM'd me one day and said, Hey, you get to collaborate with me. Do you want to collaborate? And I'm like, okay. <laughs> so I interviewed him. I, I wanted to do an interview. We did a couple things, but I wanted to interview him and um, Bahala saw it and he goes, he sent me a DM. He goes, Hey, you're really good at that. And I'm like, what? okay. Ooh. Yeah. We'll bring you, you up and have you do this. Oh. So Rob, what'd you think of building a Lego and being interviewed? Oh, I loved it. Yeah, where, like are you, where are you putting stuff. your where are you putting your Lego set? Oddly enough, up is 
the favorite movie of mischief and the favorite movie of at least mini mischief number one so this will probably be given to them outstanding oh i love that there you go rob's so sweet y'all i know my second favorite attraction first intelligence then kindness third funny as h you have to be funny yeah uh Oh, and I can't play the Southern for Bees clip because there's music in the background of that, and I don't want them to get hit with, yeah. like, this is monetized. I don't want them, yeah. I don't want anyone to claim it. And I can't well. edit out the music. So, but that's, it's a, it's a clip that's on my channel, so you guys can see it anytime yeah. you want. Where's the link at? We'll throw the link in chat for that video if you got it handy. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah. Let me see. Kelly, I got your email, by the way. Thank you. I will respond as soon as we are done here. Good job, Rob. Mom and mob mentality says. Thank you. So, what do you got coming up, Rob, on your channel? Uh, not a whole lot. So here, I'll post the link. She so just you leave them wanting more. You stream less, and then they want you more. Right, Valhalla? That's your that's your mo. Yeah. That's yeah. It. Yeah. Anytime there's any like traction or anything, I immediately take a two month break. He disappears, shaves his head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you see what Solomon wrote? Rob has oh my God, God. <laughs> 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 oh, Uterus is everywhere are crying right now. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Rob. It's no, like, it's it's lying. it's it's funny. There was the longest time when the, the hair, like I because I wear a hat all the time. Can I, while you're doing that, before you tell this story, last night on Ricada, I told him that obviously that I had this show tomorrow, right? Tonight. And he goes, Oh, you got Rob coming on so he can take off his hat and do his sexy little <laughs> hair thing. <laughs> I don't know if you guys know, like, I wear a hat all the time. So, yeah, it gets like itchy. And oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I used to wear hats before I grew dreads. I wear a lot of hats. My head I gets wear a lot of hats. Yeah. Oh, Lindsay has a great comment. Yeah, I have. So I promised the the chat that when I hit two hundred thousand subscribers, I would read. But I didn't tell you about the first the first attorney I ever worked for. Is he got disbarred? Um, permanent disbarred. Just threw you into a trial without telling you you were going to a trial. Weird. I can't believe that he was disbarred for. I know. the The dude. The dude. When he brought on me and who became my law partner um he his his business grew exponentially and he it's a red flag when they say you know the client trust account that's just accounts receivable we haven't earned it yet wait what so wait what yeah. no <laughs> you can't do that as an attorney <laughs> yeah exactly so uh shortly after I left his firm um, and created my own. Uh, about five years after that, I see in the news or see in one of the bar publications that he got disbarred. And I read the disbarment. Suffice it to say, the uh, the client trust account had a debit card attached to it. Oh, no. And it had overdraft protection that was used three times in a six-month span. And the client trust account was used for uh, liquor purchases and club purchases in Miami. Oh, and when asked, <laughs> when, asked that, when, <laughs> when asked about the overdraft protection or asked about the the fact that it went negative, he actually said, "Yeah, that's what overdraft protection is for." He's lucky he didn't end up in jail. Oh my god, that's bad. So That's, for those yeah. that don't know, and again, I'm not a lawyer. I've just, I just hang out and talk to a bunch of them. Right. But it's my understanding that as a lawyer, you can get away with a whole lot. You can have drug problems. You can have uh, uh, an affinity for women of negotiable affections. You can do almost anything as a lawyer, except touch that yeah, trust touch account. The trust account. Don't ever touch the trust account. Don't, you'll be it's fine. Not, it's, it doesn't matter if it's a fucking penny. It doesn't matter if it's a dollar. <laughs> you, you don't <laughs> trust. You don't touch the trust. That's what so, that's what turned Murdoch's uh, murder trial into a six week financial nonsense. Yeah. he was oh, messing yeah. with money. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, don't mess crazy. with the client's money at all. 
That's the, that's um, the biggest yeah, thing. Yeah, Quinny, no, Quinny Bly, I'm, what I'm telling you is that I what I'm saying just right now is stuff I've already said on my channel of, that I'm going to be, I'm going to actually read the disbarment complaint. I have given the bullet points. Trust me, oh there's a lot God. more meat on that bone. Um, if those are the highlights, like if those are like the, the little bullet, there's a whole lot in between. So I'm, I'm trying to combine it with, uh, I turned 40 this month. So I'm going to do just a 200 celebration 40th birthday oh, yeah. thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Go through your old boss's, uh, disbarment documents. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's I good. do like when I when I see the disbarments for attorneys or judges that I despise. I'm like, I knew it. I knew you were going to get busted. I get a little yep. pleasure out of it. Um, but um, some of them are so, so bad. They're just like, how did it take so long uh, for for that to catch up to them? The, the client trusts... Um, don't have it. Why, why would you have a debit card? Attached it, to that sounds like a, it sounds like a horrible idea. Yeah, it just sounds like a horrible idea. Like the second I read that part, there's a debit card attached to it. Every every lawyer cringes. Yeah. Every lawyer. No. This just sounds way horrible. Mm -hmm. The only reason you would have a debit card is because you're spending that money. And mm -hmm. that, like you should never be spending that money, right? Mm -hmm. You should the money that is yours out of that account, if it ever gets to that point, needs to be transferred to a different account before it's spent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't um I don't even like holding client money. Like I just settled the case. I settled a couple of them. And I just said, send the money directly to my client. Or like you could send the check to me, um, but put my client's name on it. I don't want to, I don't want to hassle with any of that stuff. I'll That's take the it fastest. And then, and then say, okay, say the client said, I'd rather sue my former client to get the money that they owe me than have the money and then cut them a check for part of it. And then they grieve you because you took too much. I don't want to deal with any of that. Just send them the money. Yeah. It's, it's a complicated, and like the, there's a big issue. It used to be, Kind of standard practice, like when a house got sold in a contentious case, if the parties were still in dispute, that they would say the law, the uh, the proceeds get cut over to a client trust account for one of the lawyers, yeah, and then it gets kicked over. We stopped doing that, um, yep, and I, I make agreed, the title company hold it. I agree with stopping to do that because the other thing is if, for example, one of those parties files bankruptcy where they get in a receivership, now you're holding assets of that client and you then get subpoenas to your trust account i don't want to deal with that shit yep. no nope. no no mm -mm. you're just opening nope. yourself up for discovery and, and investigations want, and mm -mm. at the most i'll say the title company can cut me it can cut a check and it's going to yeah. sit in my in my safe until right. there's a resolution um but i'm not so I'm not putting that stuff. Any contended money or con, you know contentious money is not going in my account if I can avoid it, because um, it just spells recipe for disaster. And then you got to—it's just so much extra work. I'm like, I'm not going to hold it. Sometimes my clients get mad if the other attorney holds it. I'm like, he can't touch it. Don't worry about him holding it. But you're not paying me to manage it. You know, <laughs> I don't have to do a bunch of extra work and accounting and making sure everything is done. Let let them worry about that. No, Nick Lotz, is this right? Nothing about that surprises me. Nothing about that at all. I wouldn't be surprised if he has a debit card attached to a Fanny Willis account. You guys, that's that the thing. You guys would be only. shocked. You would, you guys would be shocked as to some of the high-profile names you see out there as attorneys. It can blow your mind if you knew what the what the actual day to day practices were. I'm sure and how they still run their practice, and you're you would hear the things you'd be like, "Are you out of your fucking mind?" I'm sure. It's a uh, it, there's so I think there's probably two ways that most people in law operate, right? You're either defending the law or you're trying to poke holes in the law, and there's no middle ground, right? You're on one of those two versions of of. 
attack, I guess. And the guys that are trying to poke holes in the law are doing everything they can to do just that and work around the law that exists. They know it's it's a game. It's a it's a loophole hunt, right? Instead of following the rules, they're trying to yeah, find but- as many ways to break the rules. You're Legal. also that's your obligation. Sure. You actually sure. have an ethical obligation to find as many ways to get right up to that brink. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah, that if you're sense. not getting yelled at by a judge a time or two, you're not doing your job effectively. Yeah, it sense. sucks. But you have to stand in that breach. Like that's your job. You I guess you could yeah. It depends on what kind of law you practice, but you could be both of those people, right? You could be. You have to be both. Yeah. You you really I've, do domestic relations. I get yelled at all the damn time. I'm oh sure. yeah, I get yelled at by my client, by a friend of the court, by by the judge, all on the same day. Uh, yeah, it's, it's no wonder you're so quick work. to call a courthouse and start yelling at people. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I I get it, damn it. I'm gonna give it sometimes. Uh, but no, it's it's and you know the other thing is. Sometimes I've been on the exact opposite side of the arguments from the morning to the afternoon uh, in two different cases. And uh, it's, you, you know, you got to be able to, to do that as well. So, you know, challenging the law or trying to uphold the law is on the eye of the case for that very moment Just, that you're working on it. That's why I get so kind of frustrated. So there's I've got a counsel in a case on the other side right now. Um who is a uh, Kool-Aid drinker. Every email I send that attacks their position or places doubt on the investigation they did or is skeptical, right? Like that's assuming that you spoke to this person. They come back with this remarkably, this, this comment that goes, I'm, I'm, I'm offended that you would ever suggest this. No, don't be offended. Like, stop. <laughs> or they come back and they, they make a personal attack. I'm like, well, I wasn't going personal. You have been this entire time. Like, I am attacking your position emphatically. And, yeah, there's some shade in there, but let's be honest. That's the game. But deal with it. Right. Deal with it like an adult. It's wild. It is frustrating. It's hard. There are people that I... should not be practicing law and people that should. I appreciate the attorneys that are upfront about things. Like there was, I, I've got a case right now. Uh, we just filed a complaint. The other side filed their answer and said, would you agree to hold off on discovery? Cause I want to file the summary motion. And I said, no. And I sent them discovery. They never filed their summary motion. And so they were forced to answer discovery. And then they said, Hey, you never, uh, um, you know, can we talk more about this? Cause I've got a, before we do any more discovery, I'd like to file a motion and we can talk settlement. And I said, you know, do you want to hold off on discovery so you could file your motion? I'm not going to agree to that, but I will hold off if, we, if you're serious about talking settlement. And he got a, he called me later that day and he was like, yeah, I, I get what you're saying because I just had a guy ask me if we would hold off on uh, discovery so that, uh, so we could talk settlement and he went ahead and filed the motion. He's like, I'm not going to do that to you. I'm like, that's a dick move. Yeah. And there's, you know, and y- you need to be trusted as an attorney, but there are those attorneys that are just dicks. I don't trust. And- I don't, there's a lot I don't trust. And, and the other thing is there's, there's, you might make these promises, but I've also had the case where, and every attorney has, especially in domestics, where you reach this resolution and you have an agreement tentatively and you, heck, you might've written it out in the emails back and forth. Mm-hmm. Um, And it was hotly negotiated, like it was contentious all the way to the end. But now you have the outlines of the agreement and you and the other side and the attorney on the other side are completely in line. So what you do is you call into chambers to remove the matter from the court docket. Well, things go silent. And the next communication you get two weeks later is from a new attorney who said that the other attorney got fired. And now you're back to square zero. And you get burned, you get burned like one time. Well, that's one that time happens, at it. That happens so often in family law cases. All the so freaking often. time. So no, I don't agree to anything until I have something signed in writing that I can file with the court. 
That's going to be expected, though, with domestic situations, right? Because there's a lot of emotions, and it's, it's usually tumultuous. Yes and no. To get to that yes point. and no. You get you do get burned because there are attorneys that have there are attorneys I deal with who have remarkable reputations, and I trust this person all the way through. It's not the attorney that's that's pulling those strings. It's the it's the party. Like they have yeah. that litigant in. They have their client in check and what i mean is they have their client at this magical stage where the client and people we talk about client control yeah no i'm not controlling the client but i have this client in this magical arena of reality where their perspective what they believe is fair and the reality of the circumstance and what the judge can and cannot do and the risk that's involved in their litigation they all have this magical thing where it's the client state of mind and you get it to this one little sphere, usually the day before trial. You mean like yeah. Sarah Boone? Well, <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's, it's this day before trial where they're finally facing the actual consequence of where they are and they have to testify and they don't want it. They don't like it. They hate the idea. You have your client in this magical space and you reach an agreement. But you don't get it signed. And the client goes back to their house and has buyer's remorse. And suddenly they're no longer in that space and that stress that put them in that frame of mind that let them see all of the possible consequences of their case. They want a better outcome. And they say, see you later. So I can trust the lawyer all the way. And the lawyer did a whole lot of work to get that client there. It's not going to matter if that client changes their mind in the morning of, though. Nope. That's why I carry a small portable printer, always my laptop. And if we're going to have an agreement, then, it, it, you know, people are like, oh, we'll just scratch out the agreement real quick on the yeah. paper and we'll sign it. No, 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 no. We're typing up the entire damn thing, all the bells and whistles, and everybody is signing it right now before we leave. Well, that's going to be an extra hour in mediation fees. So be it. We're getting you know, this done. <laughs> David's like that guy that's begging outside of the arena. And when you're like, oh, I've only got plastic, he pulls out the card swipe. He's like, I take plastic. All good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly <laughs> what it is. <laughs> I go one further and it's a little bit faster. I just, I tell the judge, like, usually it's the, like the day of trial. I tell the judge we're going to read into the record and I have the court reporter transcribe it. And the judge puts the parties under oath. And the judge asks the parties, is this, has this been explained to you by your lawyer? Is this an accurate representation of what your lawyer told you? Do you agree to this? And then once that's there, I take that transcript. And even if things go to hell, I still have the broad line, the broad scope of it. And that transcript is right there. And I can now go back to the judge and say, hey, judge, the only issue we have to decide is like one, two, and three, because we've got everything else on the, on the agreement. Yeah. Uh, Stray. Congratulations on 7K, Dave Mackinac here. <laughs> uh, here we come. So I yeah, I just I just realized we I got seven thousand subs. That's awesome. Thank That's you guys awesome. very much. I didn't congratulations. Congratulations. I'm paying attention. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I get more uh, subs like, now that I'm retired. You're like YouTube. five or six, uh, a fifth or the sixth, a fifth or sixth away from Rob when he posted his first video. That's okay. So, so a year ago, I was streaming the Zachariah Anderson case, talking to myself, uh, and then on, on day yeah. on day four, all of a sudden, I see this one little chat. Hey, what do you think about this case so far? And from then on, it's been awesome. Uh, I've had like people to talk to, and it was Jamie. If you guys watch me ever, you'll see Jamie on the stream every once in a while. She Jamie. streams Love mostly Jamie. with the Broken Baker now. Yeah. Um, love but, Jamie. Uh, yeah, it's we come a long way in a year. Jamie. And yes, some people have in the in the chat have commented on my eyelashes. Yes, I do have Jamie lashes on. Jamie turned me on to the lash extensions. Because this is lashes. Okay, Rob, when you see a woman, do you think she's got some pretty good lash extensions? I'm into <laughs> that. I love Rob. He's like, I am not even going to. Well, before Rob answers that, can I clear, Can I say something to all the straight men out there who think that all of us straight women do all the things that we do for them? 
You don't do it for us. No, you, you do, do it for other women. Each other. We yeah. don't. No, that's a myth that men perpetuate amongst mm. themselves. We do it for ourselves. It's called self love. It's called look. I do put on makeup for the stream because it looks better on TV. Like it, you show your features, right? In real life, on a first date, even I don't wear makeup. I go with me. But oh, that's a real. You want you want you want to be fair in your advertisement. I don't I want to it. falsely advertise things, except my false eyelashes, yo. And and my people comment on my fingernails sometimes. They're my real fingernails. Like I. And if you can gr if you can grow them long and you can maintain them long long naturally yeah. grown that's yeah. you wear those with pride like that's yeah yeah totally right so like so by the way and i know that a lot of men like to think that we do now if i have a husband who's like oh i love when you wear bright red lipstick or i love when you wear those big hoopy whatever it is i'll do it like because to me, that's like a partnership and you want to do things to please the other person. But in general, like my everyday life, I don't live my life to please men. Now, if I have a man and he wants me to please him, I'm going No to wonder him. you're single, Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> Bama Girl 1955 has a question. Do attorneys that represent alleged murderers usually believe their clients are innocent? No. no. So you know, for me, it doesn't matter. For me, it, it doesn't matter, matter. because matter. at the end of the day, whether or not your client is innocent or guilty, you still have a job to do. And if you I can represent someone I truly know is guilty and take it to trial all the way, because I want to make sure that the state does their job, that they don't yep. try to pull any fast ones, that they don't try to get anything past the judge or into the record that shouldn't be there, uh, that they take no shortcuts, because as soon as you start allowing them to take shortcuts for even the truly heinous obvious guilty people they're going to start doing it for the innocent people and that's what you need to prevent doing that's your job as a defense attorney. yep view view the state as a doberman puppy <laughs> <laughs> wonder where that's reference just, is coming from just destroying lego boxes left and right <laughs> it, it's if all over leave, the floor if, if you leave the state to their own devices that willful behavior just becomes very aggressive and uncontrolled. And that, that puppy just needs constant management and opposition and supervision. And that's the role of the defense counsel. So all cases, every single case needs to have that opposition fighting back against the state, because if you let the puppy continue to grow up and they're, they're, they're starting to realize that they can get away with this, 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 they become a really bad I had, law. We I have a Congress law in the state seen. of Michigan that says that you can bring up prior domestic violence charges and a current domestic violence charge going back 10 years. But not even charges, allegations, police reports, rumors and speculations from, from random exits, right? But it can only go back 10 years. So what do I get from the prosecutor? Things that go back 27 years, all lined up. One allegation within the 10 years time span out of like 12 that she gives me why why is she giving me this she knows she can't admit it but now i have to bring a motion to say judge preclude her from bringing this stuff in she knows she can't but she's still offering it that's what you're preventing does the and one allegation in 10 years open the 30-year window no 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 it doesn't no it doesn't okay. but okay. they will try to get away with it Period. Yes. they will Thomas Absolutely. Jefferson said it best, y'all. The tree of liberty on occasion needs to be watered with the blood of tyrants. Wait, hang on. I was pulling up lefties. Well, I was, super trying, to, yeah, I was with, trying to get lefties up there. Lefty with $5. When can we expect more coverage of the hails in a favorable light? Asking for a few friends. Tomorrow, lefty. Tomorrow. We'll talk. There you go. Um, but yeah, no, that was a good question though, because uh, when you're when you're a defense attorney, it doesn't matter. It shouldn't matter. You you have a job to do, and it's to keep the state in check. Your job is not necessarily to get your client off, but um, you, obviously you advocate for your client. But at the end of the day, you need to make sure that the state is in check. Yeah. Lefty. The state will absolutely get away with whatever they can, always, every time, yeah. without question. It is up to individuals with the ability to keep the state in check. Those people typically are lawyers. 
And um, if I'm being completely honest, we want them to be lawyers. We don't want them to be worse than that, so to speak. We don't want them to. I get, to a, be, I get a lot of pushback on the Iowa college murder case. Uh, I forget his name. Koberger. Koberger. Oh, I got annihilated yesterday on that one. Why? Yeah. Cause I, yeah. Because I thought I thought the prosecutor was I mean I thought the prosecutor was whining. I thought Is that case happening? Wrong. No, this was this was the defense counsel went out and surveyed, uh, was doing surveys because they were gonna do a change of motion venue or change okay. of venue motion. Yeah. Um prosecution gets wind of the surveys, gets wind of the questions being asked, which they they wouldn't normally get wind of. Like this is happenstance that brings that up. And Prosecution files a motion with the judge. The judge, well, and Taylor files a response that's a letter, but not a full response, but says, I don't have the time. Like, it was 11th hour filing, and the judge enters an ex parte order and says, stop. And then it becomes an attack on Ann Taylor for or for violating the non-dissemination order, which she did not violate, objectively. Like, you read the order, she didn't violate it. And it... it it frustrated me because people people don't like defense attorneys. They just don't because the prosecutor gets the first word. The person they represent is the bad guy because they – so there's automatically a preconditioned understanding of what we should see from the parties. Everything the defense attorney says is shady. Everything the, the prosecution says is for the state and, and good. So what's what's wrong with people like me where I'm like, wait a minute, that's not how the system is supposed to work, right? The system is supposed to be everybody's innocent until the state proves that they're guilty. Why why, Mahalo, why you're is the, that no longer the norm? Because if you're the twenty percent of the B population that flies off and does its own thing that that doesn't follow the rest of the bees to the flowers. Nope. Um, but is necessary to keep the society going. Um, that's what you are. You're the twenty percent of the outliers. You're a unicorn. Well, and, and, and that's uh, and, and Solomon says Solomon says it right here. That's a presumption of guilt, Rob. Yeah, that is actually how the system realistically plays out. Well, he's not. You're Should not we, wrong either. Look at law and yeah, chat. Look, look at law and crimes chat. And I'm I am just being I am just being factually accurate in my assessment of the system and how it plays out. Even the, the concept of someone showing up in handcuffs or with a jumpsuit on, we recognize that as being inherently prejudicial because it automatically puts a subconsciously the thought of guilt in the mind of the person that's there. Dude, look at all the well, the and it's also look at all the negative media that Kohlberger has gotten, that the Delphi case, uh, whatever the hell his name is, has gotten. The, like it, it most of these. Most of these cases are so sensationalized by court TV and the media that before the trial ever gets close to, to starting, they're already guilty. You know what I mean? They're already presumed guilty by 90% of the fucking country. It, uh... The one good thing that the judge in the Karen Reed case said, despite her 200-foot free speech zone, is um, that the police officers cannot wear their uniforms when they testify. I did like... Yeah. That yeah, they're not the cops aren't allowed to be in uniform anywhere near the courtroom, if I remember yeah. correctly. I didn't look at the actual order, I just kind of got secondhand. But it's all this Richard perception. Allen, thing. Thank you. Thank yes. you. Um, but you know, John Adams defended the the British troops that shot uh the civilians in the Boston Massacre and won, got them acquitted. Really? And yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, he represented cool. them. He was their defense attorney. Um, and cool. they were acquitted in the Boston massacre. Uh, and uh, you know, our, our our nation is built on this defense attorney strategy, right? And for people to have gone so far away from it, it's kind of sad. It's it's terribly sad. It's terribly um, sad. Did you see FD Food Fairy's question? I feel but the Apple River system. Didn't we talk uh, about my that? my opinion on this case thus far, it seems to me that he acted in self-defense when he did the actual 
stabulations. Oh, the people that were tubing, inner tubing, or yeah, whatever? yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, and obviously there was more that happened before that, right? There is there is who knows who was being the bigger asshole before that, but. The, the situation had been in, disengaged and reengaged, and I think at the the time of the action, I think he was acting in self defense. So, um, I I have the same stance as well. However, I haven't watched all the trial. I haven't seen all the testimony and things like that. But with the parts that I have seen, specifically the video, um, looks like it should be self defense, but. That is a perfect case for a trial. And what I've seen so far, I don't know if the state's pulling a lot of shenanigans, but it's it He's seems that idiot. if it's presented correctly, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, your fellow citizens, this is what happened. These kids came up, started harassing him. He's been pushed down. You see it in the video, and he stabbed. Now, you decide if this is valid self-defense or not. Uh, this is a perfect case for a trial. This is the kind of case that you want to go to trial uh, if if any case does. And now I know people are going to stand up there and say, uh, it's clearly self-defense. He shouldn't even be charged. That's not this. This is a gray area. And these are the cases that should go to trial. You know, the clear-cut cases where there's clearly not enough evidence, um, such as Karen Reed, you know, those cases shouldn't be going to trial. Uh, Sarah Boone, for example, that case should have been pled out. That should not she go should to trial. That That's why I say it's going to be a boring ass case. It's like she business. She business was a boring <laughs> ass case because she was obviously guilty. But well, the great area wasn't cases, boring, and she was very clearly guilty. That's because of the cast of characters. There were days that were boring, but the cast of characters. It's the same thing as she business. She business. The cast of characters was. The more that you heard about that case, it was like, are you? Plus, we have the happening. That yeah, but, but my point is, is that those cases didn't need to go to trial because they're clearly guilty or clearly innocent, like yeah. like Karen Reed. But this case is the case to go to trial on. Karen Reed is not clearly guilty. No, clearly not guilty. She shouldn't okay. even be charged. Yeah. No. Okay. I wanted to make sure I heard that right. Or you said it right. Now, Turtle people. Boy, on the other hand, no. <laughs> one of these cases. I've got. Well, like you, a, you don't know anything. I've, I've got a. I've got a coughing. I've got like a five minute warning because I hear coughing. Okay. All right. Well, we can end. Thank you very much, Rob. Oh wait, we got one more super chat. Grifty. Is that? How, why aren't you in my chat, Grifty? You. I like your head. Uh, <laughs> the presumption uh, of guilt even uh, applies to family court. Well, you know. Sometimes Rob, yes, I want to actually, I, I, I want to have you back on just for a regular stream because I want to talk to you about family law. I've been yeah. a big proponent trying to get a presumption of 50-50 passed in the state of Michigan. And from what I understand in Virginia, they have that. And I wanted to have a chat with you about that. We will have it statutorily, but the case law is so, it, it is so ingrained in the case law that that's where, that's what you get. Like it, it, it is a presumption. Um. And I, it was an interpretation based on the statute that says the best interest of the child is suited by uh, frequent and continuous access to both parents. And the reference to frequent and continuous to both, the court viewed that as being 50-50. And they have consistently. Okay. I, want, I want to talk to you about that because that's not what we have. Um, we don't have a presumption anyways. And so I always like in ours is to you, you go to those money grab machines, put two people going through a divorce in the same money grab machine and say no rules. But whoever gets the most money gets the kids and they will be gouging each other's eyes out and punching yeah, each true. other. That's what we have. That's the system we have right now. Well, and the, the um, problem is that's kind of family court in general. And this is judges have to stop rewarding that judges will tell us like. This is it's kind of the bullshit that goes with it. I'm sure you've gotten it too, where the judge says, I really would appreciate if counsel would would cooperate more or play play nicer, or oh, I don't appreciate the, the constant litigation. You you see that, and then the judge at the end of the day ends up rewarding the person who played dirty. It's being most litigious, yeah. Yeah. So it's like, well, judge, stop telling us to not throw dirt and then reward the person that throws the most dirt. Night, Pamela girl. Actually, All right. before before we close out, do you find a dis, uh, desperation, disparage, whatever the word is, um, between between men and women in in your uh, outcomes of cases? 
disparity. Thank you. That was it. Judge dependent. Um, this is why, especially in family law and actually traffic and criminal law, like those two areas of law in particular, pick a freaking attorney that knows the judges they're in front of. Absolutely. Because yep. I will know a judge will lean more towards one direction or the other. And that allows me to anticipate how to get around that. Like I know they're going to have a predisposition and I can, I can go into that trial anticipating how to beat it. Yep. Nope. That's very true with family law for sure. Um, well, thank you, Rob, for joining us. This has been awesome. It has been a lot of fun, Rob. I appreciate you. And uh, thanks yeah. for, thanks for, for rocking out with us for, four hours oh, I, had, I had a great freaking time i chose a lego set that was like don't do the flowers guys don't do the flowers okay thanks. <laughs> uh everyone in chat thank you very much for all the super thank chats and the member gifts so and all that yes. good stuff chat you guys are always amazing and oh, i you. we generally genuinely appreciate the fact that um for the most part y'all stay civil and we get to discuss. 100%. And thank you for all the super chats different. and the super stickers and the kind questions and for being patient when I couldn't get to everything on time. We We've got it. a couple of more coming up. Our next one, I think, is this next, next week. week. Next Saturday, we got another yeah. Yeah. Four and three. We got a cool, we got a cool Four? YouTuber. He makes yeah. uh he makes uh he he does this braiding Drop thing. I don't know him. how to say what it is. Torrent. Torrent. Awesome. Yeah, man. Yeah, Torrent, yeah. Oh God, that that the patience the involved in doing that. Right? It is amazing. I've been me. watching some of his live streams, and uh, oh awesome. my God, he yeah. blows me yeah. away. He he, he brought me on. Like a, he brought me on a stream with him a couple months ago. And, his name is uh, Torin Three. Sorry, people are asking us to repeat his name. Oh, hang on. Let me grab my. Let me grab the braid. I'll show you. Oh, he's got the actual braid. So so Torin does this. Um, traditional Japanese style of braiding, and I can't remember what it's called, and I feel bad, but I yeah, I know that's what I was trying it. to think of. I have brain injury. You just uh, kumi kumiho kumi kumiho, something like that. Anyway, yeah, you're close. Yeah. You're close. So what this is is it's a double sided braid, mm -hmm. right? So there's two braids that essentially lay on top of each other, but they intertwine. So that you flip the colors around, and it's it's all one very thick uh, material, and it's it's absolutely fascinating. He has this uh, really awesome like loom setup that he works with, and I'm it, it's it's one of the most uh, meditative streams. I still watch kinda, it. There he is. It's so cool, y'all. It's so cool. Torin wanted to do the braid on the Lego stream, and I I had to put my foot down. And I was like, no, man, we yeah, gotta have Lego. Gotta do, gotta gotta do have Lego, man. Yeah. So he finally got some, and uh, he's, he asked he's me if I wanted week. like if I wanted mine to be like a belt. I said the concept sounds cool. He sent it to me. I was like, I can't put this on my body. Like this, no, is, this is, I can't because like, it's art, is, right? You that should be hanging on a body. wall. Is what that's too pretty. Be. What is it? Hey, that's where it's hanging. It's hanging back there. Yeah, yeah exactly. it's beautiful. It's stunning. That's very cool. So he'll it's be cool with guy. us next weekend. We've got a few more lined up coming up, and then we have the Mother's Day special where Wendy will be building, and Brandy Churchwell will be back here to MC for all of you all. So, um, so until then, you guys have Good a night. wonderful rest of your weekend. We'll see you. Okay. Love y'all. Okay. What's this all about? I'll show you mine if you show me yours. I'm like, whoa, this is.